I'd spend my last dollar, I do spend my last dollars investing in myself. I believe so much in myself. I'm willing to do that. I'm willing to go to zero if I have to, to like try and make it work. Cause I know that it's going to like for real. And I always make it work every single time I've ever done that. It's worked out. Hmm. I've done that a few times. Like, yeah. you know, like it feels great, bro. Like you just realize that like, and it's not going to, you know, it's, it's going to catch up one day. You know what I mean? Like I'm not going to need to. Purpose in the Purpose in the Youth. Purpose in the Youth Podcast. Welcome, welcome back. Welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth Podcast. What's your favorite bearded man? The one, the only Bob Hey. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Purpose in the Youth podcast. What's your favorite bearded man? The one, the only, Bob Bay. Today in the house, second time on the podcast, fellow bearded brother, repping rep in Massachusetts fully. What up, baby? Yes, sir. All around creative. I don't. I can't even put you at, in a box of photographer, videographer, designer. You are just a creative. Period. I feel like is the best way to describe you. Good. Is that is that how you would explain yourself to people? Yes. Dude. Yes. Like, what? well, I I don't really ever have to explain myself to people, but whenever I do, I just say creative. Yeah. You know what I mean? And then they're like, what do you mean? And I just say I'm a designer. I would like, just say, look at my Instagram. Look what I do, baby. I hate that. Yeah. I really, I hate that <laughs> You don't want to do that? No, bro. I, <laughs> I'm more of a sneaky flex kind of guy. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. I, I don't, don't want to look extra. Yeah. You know I don't like, mean? I just want, but I want my work to speak for myself. You know what I mean? I don't want to be sure. like, sit in front of somebody be like, oh, I've podcasted with this person, this person. I'm just like, ah, I do this podcast, like artists, DJs, check it out. You know what I mean? Yeah. Very subtle about I it. I think we're like, you're in a content based business. Yeah. I don't need to like, I'm, it's like I'm a behind the scenes guy yeah. for the most part. You know, like I'm. I don't really need to like, t I don't have a website. Yeah. yeah I mean, I have like e-commerce stores, yeah, yeah. but like, I don't have like a benfoley.com or buy, like you I do used have to though. You used to have the, uh, buyfoley.com, right? Was that, Ooh, yeah, I, got, I still have buyfoley.com. Okay. There's still some t-shirts on there <laughs> if you want to buy them. Um, <laughs> Go cop some now before we get into the bro, podcast. I found, so there, I had it in an old warehouse that my, com uh, my buddy owns. And he just found a box of old shit like a couple months ago. And I was like, bro, let's like, count it. Let's throw it back up. <laughs> Get it back to, on there. Had no idea it was there. That's a nice little so, yeah, to so find. Like, it's like half off if anyone wants to go get it. Ooh, go get I don't. It I also didn't like promote it because like old shit. So it's kind of been like if you know. You don't want to be forcing it like, yo, I got all this new stuff rolling out even though yeah, it's from yeah, two yeah. years ago. But if right. you know, you know, go find it. Go get it. Yeah, yeah. Two years, bro, is the last time we is when we sat down. Long time. Twenty, you were twenty one at the time. We were at the Revere Hotel in Boston. You were out there for Studs tour slash pop up shop run. It was right when you guys like had released the shoe. Yeah. Thinking back, two years, man. What has changed about Foley? What are the big things that are jumping to your mind when you think about the last two years? Man, I don't know. I don't really like look back like that. Yeah. Like for real. You're gonna be looking back today on this. Well, like I, when you leave here, you're gonna feel like you just sat through a therapy session. I, I would session. love to. Like, yeah. yeah, I mean, like I think you need like if we could be more specific about like which what stuff like mentally, I guess. How about that? You feel like you're like, are you in the prime of your life right now? You're just focused. You're driven. You know what you need to do. Uh, no. Um, but yes, at the same time, mentally, yeah. I feel great. Yeah. You know, I actually just went through some physical shit. Like my neck's all fucked up. Mm -hmm. I'm like, I'm pretty like fucked up. I'm literally was like laying on ice before I like Damn. literally been just like, what happened to the neck? I got something going on with my disc. Like they're still trying to figure it out. Yep. Happened like two weeks ago. Yeah, I've just been seeing a fuckload of doctors. Yeah, like honestly, I just you haven't mess, been able you to mess do with shit. that health, man. That completely throws off everything else that you do in your life. Bro, yeah, it's really, really checked me. Like yeah. I gotta like get my shit together after yeah. that. Like yo, the shit that the doctors are saying. Like bro, I don't want to have neck surgery. I'm 23. Nah, dude, you know like with those percentage. I, I don't. Like, I like, don't know what they are, but they're not. It's like, not good. It's, it's too yeah. high of a percentage to even like want to like think about. Yeah. Like, so like I'm I'm in a place where like yo I gotta like so I gotta rest for a minute. It's yeah. a long healing process, like six to eight weeks. 
So like, I'm just supposed to like ice. I'm not really supposed to work much. Like I'm not, I'm supposed to sit down as little as possible. So it's either stand or lay. All right. Like, we're going to have to pop these up. No, I mean, that's like, bro, I was really laying down the whole morning knowing that I was going to come and do this. I popped half a fucking painkiller knowing yeah. that I was going to be doing You got to be sitting down for it's it. Like, yeah. Like I just, you know what I mean? Like it's, I have to just like rest and which my mental really came into play, bro. Cause I was like really fucking, I was on the East coast when it happened, bro. Mm. I was, I was supposed to go out the East coast for like three, four days. I ended up being out there for like two weeks. Oh, because of, because of the actual I couldn't fly. Wow, I couldn't was that fly. Bad? Couldn't, bro, I literally couldn't move for the first couple of days. Wow, like, that's some real shit, bro. Man. It was crazy. It was crazy. Really fucked me up. So I that I mean, like, I was already meditating. Yeah, we, we were talking about this before. Yeah, but yeah. like, I had just started to meditate maybe like a couple of weeks earlier, and it was really, really hard to do it when that was going on. And I think like, I try I tried it a little bit when it was going like first happening, but like, bro, I was in so much pain, like crazy amounts of pain so how, how did mike get you to do that because i know you had said very before we started that mike kind of inspired you to to start meditating what was it that got him to say yo you should try this bro i mean he's been trying to get me to do it for like at least a year mm. like he's been on this like big meditation i think he does it for like at least an hour or two every day oh he's really in the oh he's really in it like, oh wow bro and I, he's he's a different person like I watch him watch his thoughts. Like I watch the way he reacts differently to negative situations, bro. It's crazy. It's wow. Crazy. He's just much more in tune with like calm. Yeah. Peaceful. Yeah. Like you know, it's nuts. Just present, just like bro. And I, I know bro. I can picture where the what you're describing, bro. I'm, I like we're it. both people that like so, we're both people that have a lot of thoughts in our head, yeah. like all the time. Mm -hmm. It's like it's, as a creator, and like that's part of the. It's part that's of what you signed up for. It's you know what you signed up for. And it's not about meditation is about not having a lot of thoughts. It's about observing the thoughts you're having in a calm manner and like just realizing what's what that's coming from, what mm -hmm. you can maybe do or can't do, and just being okay with mm -hmm. being okay with it. Mm -hmm. I watched that switch flip. Like like genuine genuine like change like yeah. and actually we uh we went out to joshua tree just me mike blue kilmer and versace versace was like our little chaperone like <laughs> stayed sober all uh, of you guys no him oh versace, versace. Right. no fuck no i was gonna say i feel like Bro, most we went people to don't joshua go to joshua tree, tree. No, 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 i've no, never okay, been but so. i i know that that's a place that people are the opposite of sober yeah no so we brought a bunch of acid and a bunch of mushrooms <laughs> and literally for 48 hours straight tripped our balls off oh like for literally all the whole time yeah and like as much as we not like as much as we could but like maxed out the shrooms like we were trying to trip our balls off <laughs> and just like come to grips with like it was just like what spiritual journey like we like it was a creative process like we went out there and we figured some shit out like we left with like a mission like we like sober the next day we talked and we we're like before we left we we're like yo what it what fuck it, we did it what did that mission look like what what was the big realization for you guys bro like it was me blue and mike were like the last ones to be up we're tripping our fucking balls off like mike's in the hot tub Blue and I are just like posted, like we're in the middle of the desert. There's nothing around us. There's like coyotes howling. We just killed a fucking uh, brown recluse on. We were tripping balls off. I had to fucking deal with a brown recluse in the house. I don't even know what that is, but that sounds crazy. Crazy deadly spider. Oh, like, oh wow. Oh, Paralyze wow. you. Oh, like, okay. And it like will jump at like it's a, like it's an attacking spider. Yeah, yeah. Not like a trans. Tarantulas will like only fuck <laughs> with you if you fuck with them. Yeah. This one's coming. This is for coming you. for your neck. Okay. Okay. Um. So like yeah, thank God Versace was so like sober because everyone else would have thought that we were tripping and seeing it because he was like, no, you guys are, you guys need to that calm thing's down here. Or... Like no, we just thought that it wasn't actually there. You know what I mean? Yeah. Thank God someone was sober and like dealt with it. But um, forty. We were just sorry. Down. We were just out. We were outside and we were just. It was probably like six in the morning. And like out of we were just talking. It was all. It was a long process. It was over the forty-eight hours. Like we went out there with like a purpose. Like we were trying to figure out like what the next not move is but like just we was a betterment of ourselves like it was a team bonding like let's mm. go we're gonna go to the desert we're gonna come out better people yeah and we did yeah we genuinely did and like there was like a moment we were like fuck yeah we did it well it's interesting because you guys are at this point now at least from somebody that's been watching from afar f since the beginning i feel like is like you guys have accomplished a lot which i think 
I would imagine being your shoes, it gets, it's a fun, but it's a scary part of like, what is next? We've toured the nation. We've sold out shows. We've done, you've done, you've crossed off so many of these bucket list items yourself that it's like, what is next? Because it's not, I mean, of course we all want to make money, but that's not the position that you guys are in of like, how are we going to make ends meet? It's now about how do we take everything we've done that we love doing and how do we elevate that? And I feel like exactly. that's, it's an, it's an interesting part to, to, or to see for you guys, because I know there's this new th- mic that's coming and nobody really knows what that might be yet just yet, but it's, I'm very curious to see what is that next chapter going to look like for you guys and the team. I can only reasonably speak about myself Mm -hmm. and all I can really say about the mic situation is it's just, and same goes for me. It's just, it's us, just a better version of us. Mm. Like we both took some time on our own and together. Like, you know, we've always worked together. It's not like we, yeah. But like as people kind of like stepped aside, did some like inner looking and like, like, here's how I can be happier. Here's, Here's what's going to like put a little fire under my ass. Here's mm. what's going to make me happier. Here's what you know. Is there one thing that you feel like you had to cut out or have to cut out? Was it for for you specifically? Oh yeah. So I actually cut out um any unproductive content. Like during the day. Like so when I until like my girl gets back at like six or later, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? I don't, I don't watch TV that isn't like shark tank or like an interview mm-hmm. or mm-hmm. a, like a lecture. I'm it's, I'm only consuming content from the moment. I, like when I wake up in the morning, I don't put on the television. I don't play video games. I don't do fucking anything. I'll watch podcast. I'll listen to podcasts. Mm-hmm. I'll watch podcasts. I'll watch interviews. Little le- like creative bro. And they're like, stimulating your brain. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I'm not consuming anything else yeah. literally until like my girl gets back and like we'll put something else on and i just like turn my brain off yeah it's like i need you know yeah. what I mean? like that's very healthy yeah i can't just be on all the time mm-hmm. like my my girl was just gone for like five days and i didn't have that balance and i found myself like staying up way later because i was just fucking going 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 mm-hmm. And like unhealthily, like I'd fucking be watching Joe Rogan podcasts for like eighteen hours, bro. <laughs> that one, that one, I feel like is an okay thing to do to go down the rabbit hole of Joe Rogan because it's it's good conversation. You're learning, right? But I did that every day for five days yeah. while she was there. I was like, okay, yeah, brain, okay, we, I get it. You need to shut it down. You're thirsty, like <laughs> we, there's but balance chill. of it. Like, yeah, yeah, there's balance chill. of it, and that's you know healthy because, bro, so much anxiety comes with like knowledge yeah and the pursuit of more yeah bro there's a lot of peace and and uh what's the phrase my like mindfulness you're saying or no like if you know if you're not informed you're like happier well i forget what the actual phrase is <sighs> well i'm big on the same thing of like the first two to three hours of my day i'm not paying attention to any social media content I like will throw up something on my Instagram when I first get to the gym just to like, sh- I like to document my day, but I don't consume content. And I've been a big preacher of like, you need to look at what you're consuming, social media, TV as a diet. So if you feed yourself the right foods, you're going to feel great. If I you feel feed yourself bad shit. the social media shit though. Let's hear it. I'm on, like, I don't limit my social media. Social media is fuel for me, bro. Like I don't... F- because I follow the right shit. There you go. That's what I'm trying to say. That's what I'm trying to say, though. 100%. Because you're, you're feeding yourself the Bro, right you look content. look at my Instagram. I don't follow any girls. Yeah. yeah. It, like, and they're I not know. my homies. Yeah. Like, or I don't know yeah. from... I know. It would be rude of me to unfollow. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. I've muted a lot of the people, those people. Mm-hmm. I don't need to see that shit. I don't need to see your ass on mm-hmm. Instagram. I don't mm-hmm. care. Yep. Like... You're conscious of Bro, those. you look at the people I follow. It's people that are gen... Like, I look for it, not inspiration, but like, I love seeing my peers thrive mm. and like, pe- like love that shit, bro. Yeah. I love seeing my friends do dope shit. I like, that's what I see on my feed yeah. all day, every day. And yeah, it's like, yeah. that's inspiring. You know what I mean? I'm not trying to like, yo, this homie's doing this. So I know I need to do that. I'm not comparing myself. I'm not like, but like when my friend does something dope, I was like, yo, that's fucking sick. Yeah. Good for you, dude. Yeah. Like, Use it I, as inspiration, I'm, motivation, yeah, fuel yeah. to you. Bro, that shit feels good when I watch motherfuckers do that. It's like, I know I can do that. Yeah. It's not a question like, yo, I wish that was me. It's like, that shit's coming. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. facts though. I don't yeah. have, that That was a huge thing. Like, I had, I had a realization that I have this like, kind of unwavering self-doubt. Like, 
lack of I, I have full belief in myself yeah like for real i know that i can navigate like any situation i've always had i like i looked back at like my life and shit and like li- even just as a kid i just knew like whatever i was trying to do even if it was dumb like it's not i might not know you know what i mean I, it might not work out but i have like this unwave i've always had that belief like i don't question it until after the fact you yeah. know what i mean i just i see this i say okay let's fucking do it let's go like yeah. i can do this even if it's like bro this shoe which we can talk about later but like it took four years yeah and like it, you can track it back even longer bro like i had a lot of fails to get to the goods like yeah and i and i'm not bro thomas edison failed two thousand times before getting the light bulb correctly it's crazy think about that two thousand fucking times i know <laughs> I, dude, I saw that shit and i was like oh my god two thousand times I, I literally i was like i think where i was driving like my girl was driving and i just turned to her and i was like do you know how many, like how much this this bro that this bulb that we're probably that, that we're know. yeah probably that we're um, like utilizing dude, right now it's nuts two thousand two thousand times think about that i was like yo i turned to her i was like baffled at that amount of self-belief I was like holy shit i know but like that's the people that get it done yeah yeah, I mean, it doesn't. It didn't. He wasn't like, "Fuck, I'm gonna do it. I'm, I'm done at 2,000." I'm not. Yeah. One thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. He was, gonna, just do, he was just gonna do it until he got it right. Yeah. Because he was, you know, he was enjoying it, or you know, whatever reason. Like, think about that world that he was living in too. There wasn't no social crazy. media. He couldn't just Google. How do I? How do I readjust this? Uh, this engineering on this. That was the time. Yeah. That that time in life, there was no distraction. You would, well, you didn't know, you didn't know. So it was just I'm kind sure of, there was. It was just. I'm sure there was different kinds of distraction, bro. You think so? Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Yeah. There's always distraction. Yeah. I know. Like, bro, yeah, I think about what they were doing back then. Like, I don't even actually know the exact time frame. Like, I'm sure there was wars going on. I'm sure there was whorehouses, yeah. prohibition. Like, yeah, yeah. Just a different. Yeah, it's just I mean, a like, different. There's always distractions, bro. And, yeah. Like, even going back to like hunter gatherers there's going to be distractions of yeah. some sort the title of our of that first podcast we did was do something today to make tomorrow better is that still i know and it's a tattoo on you how how relevant is that still to your life every day even like more meaningful every day yeah but like seriously bro like i actually I looked back at that interview recently um cuz i i forgot yeah. Like everything two years about. ago bro literally july 2017 yeah it was crazy hotel in boston we're just shooting the shit i was that was episode 46 of the podcast like i'm about to be at 138 this week like bro, was, two different people right now it was reconnecting because i was super high when we did it and i was super high when i watched it so i didn't remember shit i was like genuinely watching it as like a viewer yeah i was like what's gonna happen next <laughs> bro i love it was honesty. amazing but I love yeah the honesty um what, how still we, very relevant. Do still, something still, today. Still very, very relevant, bro. Like I, it's more relevant today than it was then. Yeah, I mean, I think every day it is that. Like, it doesn't stop. Like, I think we talked about that. Like, complacency is like the worst enemy. And yeah. Like, bro, I go. I wake up and I go. Yeah, you're still that early morning rise too. Every yeah, because I remember we talked about that too. Every day, I think it's getting earlier, bro. I'm waking up at like six every day. I'm not even trying. I, my body wakes me up at that time every day. Yeah. I don't have an alarm set. I don't have nothing. I'm not trying to do that. Like, I didn't try and get in that groove. My body's telling me to do that. And the moment I wake up, my brain's telling me to go. What's the fire under your ass? That, bro. Yeah. I, I just want to make dope shit. Yeah. Like, I, found, I, I came to that realization that, like, I just want to make shit. Like, I like the learning process. I like the, like, the testing. I like coming out with a product. I like seeing how people react to the different versions of the product and like i want to be honest and like show people like how i got from a to b because like it's never that good the first time yeah it's the like bro the shit the first the first version the next day i was picking it up i had literally just gotten out of the shower i put lotion on i was like going like i was leaving Mm -hmm. i was like going going to spray dropped the bottle shattered it Shattered it, and I was just like, you know what? That's not the one. No, it is the one. Oh, oh, oh. no, I that's the were, one. I thought you were saying no, like, that's the one. It's hard. Oh, I, I gotta got go you. back. I gotta remake it. Oh, that's I the fucking you. one. That's my test. Oh, I got you. That's my test. And it happened. It, bro, I always get stupid shit like that. Like I have another product 
I should have brought it. I can't really explain it, but <laughs> the first version of it, it's going to be really, it's really hard to explain, but the first version of it cracked. How? How to crack? Stupidity. Yeah. <laughs> of my own fault. But like still another test, like, yo, that shit's tight. Like make another one. Yeah. It's going to be better. And it fucking was. Both of these are fucking better. V2 is fucking better. Yeah. Like it's okay to fail. Keep going. Like keep going. Like you got tat it, bro. Tat it on Facts. you. Tat it on the back of your head. Man. I know that branding is really strong. It's so, it's, bro, it's just so, so, so simple, but like Everyone's keep going. It. It's yeah. It's insane. It's insane how big it got. Yeah. Tom Brady's throwing it on his merchandise. Well, we might have to, we have to give can't... Tommy a little call to say what's going on, Tom. What's, uh, where'd you guys pull this from? Yeah, I, I can't really go. I, I can't talk about that. Yeah, anymore. yeah. But, um, yes, a lot of people are using it. Yeah. Now, it was very, it was, it, I didn't see anyone doing it a couple years ago when Mike started. Yeah. It's a good coincidence. For the right reasons, right? Bro, yeah. yeah. I, I don't care. Yeah. We can talk off camera. Yeah, uh, there's a reason I I'm like not the, mad. Yeah, I I got you. I got you. We'll go down. We'll go down uh, the whole of of some more Mike stuff in a little bit. But uh, you know, somebody like yourself who's been you've been pretty much living away from home since 16, probably. Would you say? 15. So, fi- I just it looked is, it up. It is 15. Uh, yeah, 2013. So for somebody that's right. been living away since 15, how has your relationship changed with? Or how, how has that relationship been with your parents and even like your little brother? I mean, he's oh. probably not even little anymore. I, I feel like just, no, it's crazy. It's he's like a full grown human. Yeah, it's nuts, Hi. It's nuts, bro. Dude, he's in. He's living in New York right now, interning at a company that I used to work for. Wow. Like I used to like do like pro- special projects. So with how, them. Like, how old they would is hire he now? Me. Sixteen. Damn, because I remember like seeing him. He would sometimes pop up in some of your content yeah, or even yeah, like yeah. Mike's like videos or whatever, but. He's 16 he's a legend, now. bro. Yeah. He's, like, really getting after it. Um, it's nuts because, like, there was, a, it, there was a disconnect for a long time just because of age. Like, you know what I mean? Like, he was so young. There's no way he understood what I was doing and what I was going through. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. But, like, over the last couple of years, like, he's come out to L.A. a few times and just, like, on his own. Just, like, stay with me for, like, a week or two. He loves it. Yeah, bro. It's awesome. It's awesome. Good, good relationship now. How like, about you with the parents? Because I know that. Great. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Me and my parents talk, you know, not every day, but like frequent, you know, it's good. Yeah. Good. Are you, would you say you're proud to be from Hoyoke, Mass? Yeah. Even though I'm not technically, I was born in, I was born in Northampton, raised in Hadley. I was born at Cooley Dick, mm. raised in Hadley until I was nine moved to Holyoke. Oh, okay. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. I always I always just thought you were originally from born and raised in Holyoke, but my dad is. Yeah. Well, born yeah, he moved whatever. Yeah, yeah. Both um, both my parents are from Holyoke, Mass. So crazy. They, yeah. Yeah. No, I I consider myself to be from Holyoke. Like I have like very few memories from from Hadley. Like yeah. three. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. I, like all my childhood memories are in Holyoke. Yeah. Know? Especially at 15, you move out, then you're going to Boston, you're going to New York. I mean, we, yeah. we touched on a lot of that, but still, in the past, po- the, or the previous podcast we had done. Bro, I was just home for this injury, and uh, I was talking to my dad, and he was like, how long ago did you move out? Bro, it was eight years ago. Yeah. He's like, no fucking way. I was like, yeah. You did, you, yeah what's crazy about years. you, Foley, is you, you've, you've like, your story is so unique. Because you're only 23 today, you've accomplished a shit ton. You probably, rightfully so, are still like I haven't humbly like I haven't done anything. What do you mean? You know what I mean? Like your mind is always on the go, but like when you stop and you really think about what you've done in the past eight years, you've accomplished so much, and you're only 23, bro. Like people are getting out of college at 22, and and now entering the world, and you're 23, and you've been out here essentially for. I mean, you did New York for some time, then L.A., but you've been out grinding for eight years now. Like, that, yeah. that's, you're very unique for the right reasons. I've been very lucky. Like, What's the bro, balance, though? Luck and skill, hard no. work, a lot of that A lot of that all comes all together. All of it, all of it, for sure. But, bro, like, yeah. You know, I've been putting the right energy out there. I've been, like, 
put in the work in. But, bro, I've been so lucky to be put into positions that I can act on those. Yeah. Like, I've been put in so many dis- different places that I've used my wit or natural instinct to just be like, I should act this way or I should do this. I should cozy up to this person. Like, yeah. that just been like a, you know, an instinct. But to be in that situation, to take, to, to even be able to react, that's luck. Yeah. I'm very lucky. I'm very thankful to be that lucky. Like, I'm thankful to be talented. I'm thankful to be able to be in a position that I've been able to put all the work in. You know what I mean? I've been supported and my, you know, being able to drop out, like, the laptop, like, bro, (laughs) all this shit, (laughs) bro, like, bro, I've just been so lucky. Yeah. Like, and I think it's a skill to recognize two things. One, the whole, like, when you're in a room of people, like, the really understanding, like, the relationship, like, I need to make sure I talk to this person. I need to make sure I go extra lengths with this person. But then also, too, just the, and I, I feel like that's probably pulling from the meditation, like, the gratitude of recognizing, like, how far I've come and how lucky I was in to be in those positions. Like, it takes a lot to to really, like, look back on it and, and, and be thankful for these opportunities. Hundred percent. Hundred percent. It's it's been a recent thing where I've been able to like appreciate it and you know, it's it's humbling, bro. My I've got very little ego now. Yeah. Like, I probably when I started off, I probably it's always been like that. Like eight years ago I was an egotistic motherfucker. <laughs> like I thought it was so dope when I started doing this shit, bro. For real. I feel, like anybody, I, it was I feel so like anybody cool. that gets but anybody that gets put on at 15 16 is going to do the same shit bro yeah i would have done the same thing anybody would have for, for the most sure. part and i think you know the right people go through it and make have that realization and get more humble over time and more cool over time like bro i look back at like certain shit and just like i was not doing any like i was i was trying so hard what what moment is like coming in mind right now as you're saying that? Um, any selfie on Instagram? Mm. Literally, not like a picture. I just, I just got a beard hair in my hair. <laughs> no. Hashtag beard problems. Yeah. Um, any selfie? Any selfies? Like that's just just unnecessary. Mm. I'm not a model. I mean, mm. I like not pictures of me. Like, um, I mean, like strictly selfies. Like, my being like going up to somebody, just like taking a quick, yeah. <laughs> just you know, selfie. like, bro, that I'm gonna delete those immediately. Yeah. That will never go anywhere. <laughs> but like, the fact that dudes and the fact that I was doing that at one point, yeah, I'm embarrassed. Yeah. For real. Like, I'm not a content person. You know what I mean? Like, I, I've got no reason to be. I'm not a model. I'm not trying to get fucking. Yeah, you know, I got no. I'm not a host. I'm not any bro. I'm not trying to get nothing based off what I look like. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. well, I guess pussy back then. <laughs> but like those Im- those fucking selfies, no way they were helping. Yeah. Yo, that's been a great thing. Was the girlfriend was like, bro. I was just uh, I was out with Mike. Bro, we were with, we were at this house party. And, like, there's all these models and like this girl walks by. And, like, everyone around me was, like, talking about this girl. Like, there was, like, five dudes. And, like, everyone was talking about her see-through shirt. I didn't even notice. Didn't notice. Like, it's just my brain's not there. Like, it's crazy. Yeah, because you're focused. Bro, yeah. How long have you been with your girlfriend now? Uh, Almost four years. Wow. We took a, we took a, a break um, for, like, a decent amount of time. We took, like... I don't know, six months to a year off. I forget. But it's still that. four years. But yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's been huge in helping of you just staying focused, you think? Yeah, bro. I'm not out there like... Chasing. Yeah. Yeah. Bro, I'm content. Yeah. I'm, happy. I'm, not, I'm not content. I'm happy. Like, the fact that I'm like not even... Like, the fact that I didn't even notice that girl, like... Everyone, everyone, bro. Everyone was talking about this girl. Even girls that were like around were talking about this girl. I just didn't see it. Yeah. Like, I was facing the same direction too. That's my brain is just not like registering. You're not I'm think- an observant motherfucker too. Yeah. Yeah, you know I mean like You're not thinking about it. you're not like 
oh look at that bro i'm there to have fun with my friends i'm there it's my boy's birthday like yeah. i'm fucked i got a fucked up neck like <laughs> i'm not i'm just like there i'm I was literally there for like two hours not even like i had i packed it up like real early just like went to bed <laughs> i gotta just go like home I, I, gotta was, go, I gotta watch some joe rogan and go I to sleep gotta go lay down man like i had to be vertical but what do, yeah what do you think has been one of the biggest sacrifices you've made to to becoming who foley is today uh financial mm. bro i'd spend my last dollar i do spend my last dollars investing in myself i believe so much in myself i'm willing to do that i'm willing to go to zero if i have to to like try and make it work because i know that it's going to like for real and i always make it work every single time i've ever done that it's worked out hmm. i've done that a few times like yeah you know like it feels great bro like you just realize that like and it's not gonna you know it's, it's gonna catch up one day you know what i mean like i'm not gonna need to yeah but like i'm the fact that i can is amazing like you know what i mean that i have the ability to like take other projects and just yeah. like how pump them into what I believe in. But and and that's the thing is I feel like in the early stages for people it's so hard to spend that last dollar. But what 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 do you feel like has always given you the confidence? Because obviously you have to you have to take a risk to get the reward. Bro. And at some point it changes where you now have more financial backing that you can really bring things to life. But like what what do you think was giving you the confidence, especially in those early years? My parents told me I could always come home. Yeah. You know what I mean? Bro, I'm fucking, I'm young. Yeah. You know what I mean? If shit didn't work out, like, I, I didn't even think like that. But, like, that was just, like, the one thing that they always said. They were just like, well. Come home. You could always come home. Mm. Like, I, you know, I call my dad crying sometimes. Be like, yeah, like, I'd be, like, 16. Be like, dude, I haven't eaten. Like, I'd be like, you doing, like, one meal a day. Like, couldn't pay rent. Like, it was just, like, you know, trying yeah. to figure it out. And they were just like, well, you could come home. And I'm like, uh -uh. no. You know? And like, bro, you know, I say worst case, bro, everything fails. Everything fails. I could go home and figure it out. You know what I mean? Like, even if it's fucking for a month or a year, year's nothing, dude. I know. Year's really nothing. I know. Like, like, every year you get older, it's it shrinks. The right. What a year feels like just feels like small and small. When you're 10, 12, you feel like a year is an external. It's nuts. But it's not. Now it's just like, it's already June. It's crazy. I just saw you in December at Stud's last show, and now it's already June. It's already six months. It's like crazy. time just. Yeah. It also feels like some shit was like forever ago at the same time. Yeah. You know what I mean, like shit that was last month feels like it was a million years ago. Yeah. Like. Kanye, Kanye handing you that Nike or the his Adidas was it Adidas he, when, yeah, when he it was did his that first Adidas shoe yeah we had talked about that in the last yeah, one yeah. yeah I mean that feels like forever ago that was on Valentine's Day uh, 2014 so that's gonna be real hard to forget you're never gonna forget never that. gonna forget that. bro I that tweeted that morning fuck Yeezy fuck Valentine's Day it's Yeezy season before I even before it even happened put that shit out there that shit fucking happened <laughs> Bro, it was it was fucking easy. Your season. girlfriend's gonna be pissed. She must be pissed every time Valentine's Day comes around. And she thinks it's her day, and you're like, nah, it's it's Kanye's day first. Um, yeah. I mean, to be honest, I don't even want to really talk about this, but I'm kind of off the Kanye wave. Okay, yeah, we don't have to go down that, but we don't have to go down that that path. I'm I'm not not a fan. I still yeah. really respect everything that he's done. Mm. Um. Just don't necessarily agree with everything he does. I agree. Don't idolize him the way I did. I respect what he does. Yeah. But I don't. It's not an idol anymore. Yeah. You that's know? fine. People change. Yeah. Your feelings towards other people change. It's, Bro. It's, it's part of the game. Happens. Yeah. Happens. Yeah. I'm completely okay with it. It's a growth. It's a growth process for everyone involved. Yeah. I have all those negative situations, bro. Anything like even for shit like, bro, he's gonna grow out of it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Not he might not grow out of it, but like he will Something grow will change. because of it. Yeah, yeah, you know, at least a little bit. Yeah. I hope, I hope, bro. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I know enough to like know that there's a lot going on there, but you can only hope that he gets better. Yeah, let's a uh, couple couple things within you working with Mike because I feel like that's you know you've you've had so many different things leading you to get to where you are today, but obviously that relationship has been. I would imagine pretty important to 
who you've become today. Um, you've de- you've done a lot of his art direction, merch, uh, even from the sh- the Nike shoes. Uh, a lot you've done so much for his brand. What has always been like the feel that you've wanted to create when either doing a cover art, when it was doing the shoes. What has always been your vision with for Mike as a as a, I guess a brand? It's very collaborative. Yeah, it's very personal. Like, I always put like a lot of personal shit into it. That like, I have to like point out to him. Mm. Like, yo, I put you know, put all these hidden hidden meanings <laughs> in your shit. Like, here you go. You know what I mean? But it's very very collaborative. Like, we all it's I I can't take credit for any of it really like well it's a 50 50 thing then yeah it's a very great it's a great we're partners we're business partners literally yeah you know like that's it's a, we're great business partners you know what i mean like we, we have a great give and go you know it's, it's, a, it's a good business and creative partnership and it's very rare yeah and how how does that how does that transition feel when you guys you come up together you guys are doing whatever it takes to kind of build his brand his music to now it's like you guys have this entire way i mean you guys are running a, a brand a, a company for the homies like i've, I've seen you know content the last couple of years of you got the fucking ups truck pulling up you're loading in hundreds of packages like there's logistics behind that. There's a whole team behind that. Like what? What does that transition look like? Nuts. Yeah. It was a flip of a switch. It was nuts. We got really lucky. Like we we have a really we know, we identified a great business plan. And we executed and we executed in a timely manner, strategic manner, with good timing, with other things going on, with the people we were partnering with. We was it, we struck at the perfect time and we execute like we executed perfectly, which then gave us the perfect recipe for how to do it going forward and to replicate it, and which we've done. And we were actually buying companies now. Like wow, yeah, like we're buying companies and we're like taking them over completely. Like we might not be full owners because obviously people you know came up with the company, you know, invented the product yeah, yeah, yeah. or whatever it is, but we're like you know running the creative running the back end running the fulfillment all the whole shit running the production like everything how much of your week are you focusing on on stuff within mike then obviously it would imagine it changes maybe a whole month you you guys have a bunch of work on yeah i'm just like never off yeah i mean it's all the time you know what i mean like i a little bit different right now i would imagine for the past year because i feel like he's been i mean well I don't know We've just been you... doing like beside, behind the scenes business shit. Yeah. This year, like it's been a lot more business oriented than creative with Mike this last, excuse me, twelve months. Yeah. And um, it's been it's been good, man. Like I think there's a lot of opportunity on the horizon. Like we're, people are about to really get what every, what we've been I doing. Know. It looks like we've been quiet, but like we've been the opposite. We've never gone harder in our lives. We've never been in a better position for anything. Yeah. How amazing is it too that you guys have all kind of came up together? You, Blue, Kilmer, it's the Stud. Best. It's the best. Um, Mike has a quote. I forget, like, I forget what the exact quote is. It's from like a clip from like 2000. I don't know, 13 or something. It's like, how good would any of this be if I didn't have anyone to share it with? Hmm. And it was like referencing why he brings all of us and like why he's given us a platform and why you know who I am, you know who Blue is, you know who Kilmer is. Yeah. It's so that we can enjoy it together. And that's what we've done. Like we fucking are having a fucking blast, man. Know. You guys really have because the thing is that I've seen in other musicians specifically, their team crumbles. They're not with who they were with five years ago, but you guys have pretty much the main components have stayed the same, which speaks loudly about the team. Like that, that speaks loudly it's about crazy, what you bro. guys do. It's going on ten years. <laughs> it's nuts. It's nuts. Wow. I mean, you guys have traveled the country together, the world together. You've gone to Hawaii together. You guys have done. We've had a TV show. TV show, man. Dude, you guys show had a TV NBC, show with NBC. You had a TV show, bro. Yeah, like we did a lot of shit, bro. It's crazy. We just got our first plaque. Well, we 
it's hilarious. We got certified gold. Uh, Mike, Mike got certified gold. Um, August of last year, we just completely big league plaques. Didn't didn't order them. Didn't say anything about it. Didn't <laughs> post about it. And now that it's about to go platinum, and we're like, fuck. We should get gold plaques while we still can. So yeah. like we still, have, like, you know, I mean, it's, yeah, a piece of of, it's a piece of history. Of course. Like, so like, we just got them. Oh, that's so fun. Yeah, like we should have like they they just got shipped. Like, we should have them in a couple of days. You oh. gotta hang those, man. You gotta hang those. That's like Bro. iconic. You know yeah, what I mean? For sure. That's like milestones of moments that I'm sure you guys can look back and and picture like the life you guys were living, the people you were, Bro. the moments you were going through. Dude, these uh, actually was it. What was the um, the cover art with all the Polaroids? Was it these days? Yeah, and that's what we're gonna apply for. Bro, that that album, I can, like I can think of. Dude, that was right when I was getting this off the ground. There was so much emotion going on through my life. So anytime I come through like Jack Daniels or some of the big records on, I just I can picture and yeah, feel man. like that emotion of who I was. That was a really good album. Yeah, I was like you know. Does a really good uh, musical performance yeah. and uh, kind of really elevated things, you know. Yeah, it was it was a big album. A lot of those songs, there's about a lot of those songs are about to be gold. <sighs> like it's crazy. Like a handful of those songs about to have plaques. Does, is it nerve wracking at all to be close? I know you said it's super exciting. You guys haven't been going harder than ever, but is there any nervousness of like closing the chapter, or is it all just keep moving forward? Um. I can only speak for myself. Yeah. Um, I mean, like I just said, bro, I, mean, I got full confidence in everything we're about to do. Yeah. I swear to God. Yeah. Like, I can play some music after. Like, right, after that. Yeah. I'm so curious, bro. Bro. I'm so like, curious. My neighbors must hate me. Okay. So what we did with Joshua Tree, we figured out the album. Like that was like that was, that was our goal. that was the moment. Yeah, yeah. We were like, okay, like where are we taking this? Because there's a lot of Some pieces options. He's probably been making it for three years. There's a lot of music. Mm -hmm. Like there's so much music. Like and a lot of different like vibes. Mm -hmm. And we kind of just we just figured it out. And now we were like, okay, which of all these songs can are done? And we can just say, okay, this one's going on the album. Or B. Okay, but let's do that now with the vibe we know we're going for. Let's remake this song, or we're making new songs to fit the whole thing and kind of fill it out. It's mm. like a really so, bro. I got like ten songs. It's gonna be. It should be more than ten songs, but there's ten songs on my phone right now that I'll, I can play for you after <laughs> that are like great. Like, bro, it's literally all I listen to all day every day. I have yeah. ten songs on repeat. My neighbors must hate it because they're like he's playing dude, this dude, damn dude, stuff I'm again. talking like and I wake up early yeah I'll give I give them till nine to play music <laughs> on weekends and then I'm cranking and then, and I'm, then cranking. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I'm cranking yeah I'm going fuck yeah you guys gotta get up that's what I'm paying rent for you guys Bro, better move fuck. out yeah. I'm, I'm already being courteous <laughs> I don't think that I don't think that's ever changed about fully I don't give a fuck I feel like you've you've, you've had that mastered for a long time now which is a good skill to have yeah it's an art mm. you gotta give a fuck about some shit you gotta be respectful in some scenarios yeah you don't yeah. So you don't want to get, you know, be nice to cops. Yeah, <laughs> be nice to cops. in person. I had I had uh, scrolled back and back in October of 2018. You had put out a post from Mike. It was uh it was right around his birthday. But you had said, "Thank you for continuously pushing me to be better and instilling a fear of complacency. Your work ethic is incomparable, and yet still you see uh, you still seem to find a way to make everything fun. And and even in in our past podcast, you had pretty much gave him credit of like just working alongside him you learned work ethic how oh, yeah. how else has he made you a better person do you think uh mentally yeah mentally he's, he's like bro he's he's one of those people that also likes to just continuously get better like yeah. that's you know kind of his thing so a big part of that was is mental and phys obviously physical yeah. but like he was dude he's been trying to get me to like get on read certain books Listen to certain podcasts, meditate, stretch. Now, after this fucking neck injury, bro, you know how much I wish I could, like, go stretch and do some shit like that? I can't. But yeah. when I'm healed, I'm going to be on the biggest stretch wave. Yeah. Like, <laughs> I, honestly. Fully stretching, fully stretching, coming soon. Honestly, it's funny. Like, he always tries to put me on shit. And, like, I come to it at my own pace. But he's always right. Yeah. He's always right. 
It's like I swear to God, it's crazy. <laughs> every time, every time he's like, "Yo, you gotta try this." You're just like, "Nah, I'm good. I'm good." Well, not like, oh, you know, I'll I'll try it. I might not get it immediately. I, I, I might I might get it immediately. I might it might take me six months or a year. It might yeah. take me a month. It might take me a week. Like yeah, and it'll be like, okay, I just need to come to it. Am I? Oh, you want to figure you it out? You want to figure it out for yourself? Because we talked about this. I don't. I, I like to work on shit that I'm inspired by. And I actually saw this interview with someone. I forget who it was, but um, they're like, if you're actually working on something that isn't inspiring to you, you're wasting your time. Hundred percent. Just like that's you know, where I'm. Do you know how many? I feel. I would love to know the statistic of what people, of how many people are working on things they actually don't want to do, and it's strictly just for the money. I kid you not. You could literally put a contract right here that said. Um, you can if you become a doctor tomorrow, we'll pay you ten million dollars. We'll pay for your medical school. Everything is all paid for. Here's ten million. Just sign and and do that. There's not a chance in this world that I would ever sign that because I'm not passionate about being a doctor. I love them. Shout out to any doctors out there listening or watching, but like that's not my passion. So I will never do something that I am not passionate about. That was a check that we were talking about before mm. on camera. Mm. Before we were on camera. You know what I mean? Same shit. Yeah. Like. But yeah, man, like I got to be passionate about that shit. It's it's the root of everything. Like, yeah. Do you remember where you were August 8th, 2011? Yeah. Oh, no, that's not it. Mm -mm. There it is. You still remember that it's, day? It's, uh, it's the 6th. Is it the 6th? I thought it was the 8th. It's the 6th. Damn, I screwed that up. It's all good. That's why I was a little thrown off. Because this is two. This one's uh, two thousand eight. Damn, just ruined the moment. No, it's all good. Uh, it was August sixth. Yeah, that yeah, was yeah. the the Boston. What was it? It was the Boston Urban Music Festival. Yeah, my was mom's a, calling. The, me. Your mom's calling you. Yeah. You want to? You you just gonna hit a little, little decline. <laughs> Sorry, mom. I'm in, a, I'm in a podcast talking about you. Uh, yeah. So that's that was the Boston, Boston Urban Music Festival, and I was actually there in the crowd while you were on stage for that crazy you were 15 at the time yeah this is the first artist you ever shoot ends up being mac miller yeah talk to me about how important that moment was for you um it's kind of like a the flip, flick of a switch to me um i was at emerson college in boston doing a like a they basically wanted me to come there for, I was already doing media shit mm -hmm. before I was doing like editing, music production, like working for a company that was doing shit for like ESPN and a bunch of other stuff. Um, they saw that work, offered me to come to this like summer program that would have like given me credits to like then come in the fall because mm -hmm. I would have been 16. Mm -hmm. You can go to college at 16. Um, So I was there for media and like editing and I, you know, I was doing sports mostly and that's what I loved. Like I love basketball. I love baseball. Like I loved working on that shit. And, uh, that's kind of what I thought I was going to do. I, like I started off with video shooting basketball games. That was how I started doing video. Um, yeah. like that I thought I was going to do sports content and like work in the sports world. And my, my dad actually came to Boston to visit me while I was there and we were walking around going to get a bite to eat or something and we walked by the stage that they were building for the boston urban music festival and it had like signs on it boston urban music festival headliner mac miller and i was like oh shit mac miller's gonna be here hmm. i think my dad might be remembering this wrong i don't remember who said it but i'm pretty sure he said why don't you try and film it because hmm. i think we were talking like i had to do a end of the semester or whatever it was project yeah um and i didn't know what i wanted to do everyone else was like doing like written stuff like everyone was in the class for like different kinds of media mm -hmm. um so i didn't i didn't want to do that so i i wanted to do a music video that was my initial idea and mm -hmm. i was reaching out to all these people in boston like i could actually list some like really funny names that are be hilarious that they turned down these music videos <laughs> like bro i so i mind you i'm at emerson i have access to all this crazy equipment yeah like full video wall like the green Everything screen you walls infinity for. walls great equipment like yeah, yeah great lighting yeah people that would help 
I'm like reaching out, sending emails to all these people or maybe DMs, like what, whatever I was doing, being like, yo, like I'm here. Like I love to shoot a music video for free, like for my, my shit. Yeah. Everyone was like, nope or didn't answer. So I'm out and I'm talking to my dad and I, however it came up, we were like, why don't you try to film this and use this? Like, see if you can get that. something out of it. So next day I go into the class and I ask my like class whatever Professor. the head of the class yeah whatever yeah, she yeah. was um if there was media passes because i know that there's like student student media passes and she's like yeah but summer summer program students can't can't use them she goes you could <laughs> photoshop one <laughs> she said that she to said you? it bro she's a wow. legend so she 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 was super cool. She had just done like a LeBron James documentary on Cleveland. It was right after LeBron left the first time. Yeah, and she did a documentary on how it affected like Ohio and Cleveland. the economy. Yeah, yeah, like it fucked it. Oh up, yeah, bro. absolutely crazy, absolutely crazy. But she was super cool, and she was like working on it. Like she had just finished filming it. She was like asking me for ideas with like the soundtrack because I was like working in like music and production, and like yeah, that yeah. was how I was always had a great ear. So like. We were, she was a homie. She was like, you could Photoshop, like take this Photoshop mm-hmm. one. Cause she knew that I could Photoshop. So I literally did it in the back of the class while she was teaching a lecture. I had it, I took it, I took it to the back of the class, Photoshopped it perfectly. Took a photo that I had of something else and like put it and like repeated like the Emerson logo behind mm-hmm. it. Made it look so cheesy, but so good. <laughs> so, so real. So dude, I took it and I went down to the student print shop which is like below the cafeteria in like the main building and for six dollars i got it printed and laminated <laughs> so like i have this fucking little little, little pre- card little thing. press pass. i've got it somewhere i actually i have it you still have it yeah yeah bro i was one of those kids that, like i saved all my press passes i like i don't know was, i still do like i don't get Remember, remember I get like dope remember the passes, early I years you used stable. to post you used to post like whatever the collection you had yeah of them. yeah so I just went home and I actually still I saw it it's like a huge a huge just fucking, all these different like, press passes yeah frame that's just like filled with press passes and I got a bunch more like it's not completely full but yeah. I got a bunch that I've like got over the years like Coachella artist passes yeah, and just yeah. like shit that I haven't been able to go home and put it in you know yeah. it's not like I still have like a, bo- still like a shoe box up. you're still yeah. stacking them up so it'll be cool one day to like in the house to have like all the memories, like all the crazy shit. Like I saved everyone from the Waka tour, like yeah. all the mic shit, all, yeah. the, all the ones I've designed over the years, all the random shit that like I've gone to. Like, I, I got all of it. It's yeah. really awesome to just like have and go down memory lane. What, so what ends up, why, why get the tattoo on you then? Why? It, Cause clearly not only did that moment obviously play a role in getting you to where you are today, but him as an artist, it played such a, I would imagine important role. Yeah. I mean, I related too much with the scenario. Um, yeah. I'm I'm too close to it. Yeah. Um It really hurt that day. I had it was like kind of a wake up call, you know? Yeah. Um, yeah. I felt like I needed to do something and like that day was huge for me career wise. Like Q uh Max yeah. Manager is like mm-hmm. still a really good friend of mine. Like mm-hmm. it was actually his birthday yesterday. Um Like great guy, you know, and he didn't deserve to die when he did. Um, so that was just kind of a reminder of to not not take shit for granted, mm-hmm. but also to remind myself of like how much that day and how much he a did for me yeah. and like changed my trajectory, like personally. You know what I mean? Like I worked yeah. with him multiple times after, and like. You know, I'm homies with Q and like, I, you know, I'd see him around at shit and like, I'm, I've got a lot of mutual friends. Like, yeah. um, it just felt right. You know what I mean? All my tattoos are meant to symbolize something or remind me of something and a moment in time. And even if he hadn't died, I probably would have gotten a very similar tattoo. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. there. For real, like, that's how he, what he did for me in my career trajectory, I'm eternally grateful for. Yeah. And 
would have been if he hadn't have died, you know? Like, yeah. But even more so and even even more sad and more important that I do get that tattoo because of what happened. Yeah. And I know we had even talked about in the last conversation you, you had uh, – self tattooed at, at one point on your on your leg get help or something like that right there right yeah yeah i mean bro it's a reminder that i need for real you know yeah sometimes i just need that little extra like fuck i did get that for a reason yeah. you know it's a little reality check bro yeah like all my shit is like uh, you got the you got the day you dropped out of eighth grade. You got your parents, I think, uh, handwriting on you at some point or somewhere. Yeah, I got a bunch of shit, man. Like, what's the rose represent? I actually got that the same day. Okay, so it was just like hand in hand. Just, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Alexa did them actually. Let's go. Yeah, Previous yeah, guest yeah, of the yeah. podcast. Let's go. Yeah, Let's she go. did that, and then she did this. Uh, this one. It's like the it's an alternative keep going logo. It's the highs, lows, in betweens. Yeah. Um, yeah, I got a bunch, man. The keep going on the back had his fire though. Yeah, yeah. It hurt. No, bro, I fell asleep during it. <laughs> Swear to God. <laughs> Don't Swear lie. to God, bro. I was like laying. I was in a hotel room in, in Atlantic City. Yeah. Uh, we had a we got flown in for a show. We had just come in from Hawaii. We went out to Hawaii for like two weeks. Wow, and uh, just to, just to like, work, just to work, yeah. get a good headspace. Mike made like thirty-five songs in two weeks. <laughs> Did you run to Shep Gordon? Was he there? No, oh. no. We Sad. were on. We were in. Uh, we were near Honolulu. Shep's on Maui. You know, you know exactly where he's at, huh? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. If it was different, I'd be like trying to figure out where his house is and get an Airbnb <laughs> near it. So maybe run. Yeah, into can I can store. I rent a house nearby? Right. Can I just can we just come hang out? Let's um, talk. Let's talk about that. Uh, unless you have something else to say, let's, say, know, let's talk about that most recent tattoo you got on you. Yeah. Um, so it's, it's the, right here on a bigger. If you're watching the visual, you can really see it. But this is essentially what's on his uh, his arm or his right hand, I should say. Yeah. So it is the logo of my new company. Mm -hmm. The company is called Art. Mm -hmm. Pronounced A R T, but it's spelled A R D T. The D is silent. It's how it's part of how my middle name is spelled and pronounced. Mm. So I just, and the definition that we uh, we talked about earlier, but the actual definition of art is the expression or application of, of human creative skill and imagination. Yes. And this idea came about 2015, I think you had said, or 20. Kind of, 20, yeah. It was like yeah, it was yeah. like 2015. That was the picture. November, November of 2015. Mm. I came up with the name and a rough concept. It was kind of just like an idea of for somewhere that it was supposed to be an alternate Instagram page that I could just put out everything that I was making creatively, mm -hmm. whether that was something I was just designing on my own because I thought it was fun or cool or a comment on society or you know whatever I was doing for own you know personal design expression or it was a you know cover art for an artist or you know it was just a place to display whatever i was working on because i didn't want to make an in i didn't want to make like a website i just kind of wanted to have a place where i could interact with the people on it that i already had on instagram you know mm -hmm. it's a very quick like just tagging your other thing you know mm -hmm. it's very easy transition um so i just wanted to have a place that i could be creative freely yeah and evolving to today you know that's kind of the guidelines for the company um do you have that that thing i posted or do you have the, the exact quote no uh, i don't i i just had like the a note i had um i had just written down the actual definition on a notes thing i don't have the actual post up though oh, let's it's pull good. it, up, pull it good. up on the instagram real quick At it's good okay so it's pronounced art it is exactly what it sounds like. It is whatever you think it is. We do whatever you think we do. It's a blank canvas, a medium for creative expression. There will be things for sale. There will be things that aren't for sale. There'll be clothes. There will be shoes. There will be furniture. There will be sculpture. There will be collaborations. There will be commissions. There will be one of nuns. There will be things for everyone. 
there will be no limit to what we can and will do. Mm. That's just kind of like a summarization, but it's really like, bro, it's just me to make dope shit. Yeah. like work with people that I want to work with and like explore various creative mediums and just like that's what I, I knew that was going to make me happy I I was in like a weird place where I just like was doing so much shit designing so much shit but like that's what I felt like, like I mean it didn't feel like I was designing shit I was happy with everything that we were putting out but like I wasn't feeling fully creatively fulfilled and I had to take it back to like a child like interest and in like learning new stuff and like, okay, how can I make that? Or, okay, I want to reimagine what the X looks like because, you know, I have a personal story or connection to it and just want to like reimagine it from my own view or I feel like it's missing from my apartment or it's missing from my wardrobe. Yeah. Like, I just want to make shit. I just wanted to learn how to make it. I didn't want to like rely on anyone else on to do it. You know what I mean? Like I could go like, yo, I want to make a hoodie here. Yeah. Make a hoodie. Yeah, or, yeah. you know, I want to release a hoodie. Oh, here, let's buy a blank hoodie and let's, you know, put a logo on it. Mm -hmm. I wanted to learn the whole process start to finish and i wanted to make it fucking complicated like bro i've been developing this hoodie for fucking too long <laughs> bro like years yeah like years years like it's taking me years and it's, i'm really struggling to fucking get this shit out because like i'm trying to do it so basically hey we have we, we got some uh images over here i'm try trying to make this is the most fucking biggest headache in my life bro uh, it's a custom cord lock. Okay. So the strings will go through it at the top. Yeah. And then out the bottom to so the A. Oh, yeah. But it has an actual mechanism in it that, you know, on the back there, you'll be able to tighten it or loosen it. So if you can adjust it and pull it and, like, let it. Oh, so wow. actually, like, mechanical. Wow. So you have the design. I did that. Okay. Personally. You're a savage. Thank you. This is unbelievable. If you're watching visually, you can kind of see the details of it. It's going to, like change maybe a little bit might need to be a little bit bigger yeah i i'm hoping it stays exactly at that size or maybe a little smaller and what's holding you back you just haven't found a manufacturer Bro, it's so hard to make yeah but someone will want to do it and they'll want like ten thousand of them you have to order 10, oh, you got to so you get a bulk it's or like, so basically there's different ways to do it like i can make it out of plastic which i don't want to you want and to that would metal? be like a mold fee mm. so like you got to spend x amount on the mold and then the material and like what if the mold isn't right? Then you gotta make another fucking mold. Yeah, it's a whole other cost, bro. This yeah. shit's insane. I yeah. hate working with molds. I do have to work with molds on a lot of different projects. Yeah, and I want to avoid them at all costs. So I'm trying to find <laughs> someone that can make. It. So basically, I just want to make it like out of metal and almost like a case for the actual mechanism inside. So like, it doesn't have to be flush. Yeah, it's just gonna be like almost a skeleton with yeah, the actual yeah. mechanism inside. I've been trying to develop this for the better part of this year. Wow. And I'm like struggling. Well, I'm struggling, but like I know that it's going to be right when it gets there. Yeah. Like I, I'm being tested just enough yeah. that like, all right, I'm going to get it, but this is going to be a staple of art. This is going to go on backpacks. This is going to go on a, like there's going to be so many it's like, the of it. it's like the badge of honor almost, right? Like it's like the like Right. Like it's gonna be your identify like there's not there's not gonna be logos, like it's not gonna be like a big graphic shirt. You're gonna know that that's that piece because of the cord lock. You know what I mean? Like you're gonna know that, that hoodie's oh, that's an art hoodie mm. because you see the A piece. Mm. Or you see you know the stitch detail or whatever it might be that's different about that hoodie. But this is gonna be like the identifying it's going to be like Virgil's fucking red tie yeah, or yeah. Rude's, you know, Marlboro logo. Like, it's just like, it's the thing that you know of the brand is the A. And it's going to go more than just, as we talked about, we don't have to go into too many of like the minor de or the real details, but this is more than just clothing. This is going to be like you said, I mean, everything, everything, everything. It's yeah. just, it's like, super interesting, not to cut you off, but it what was just, uh, maybe branding purposes, it makes more sense. But when I saw and read the post 
to me it was like I felt like you already had that as by Foley because I felt like just by Foley you could create almost anything under that but then I realized well you know what this is like a separate entity because you could say by Foley is like his personal brand where this could become its own separate thing that stands alone and I was like okay exactly. that makes that makes a lot more sense to me exactly so I treat by Foley as almost like a art project like just like which is <laughs> fuck man that's crazy <laughs> wow i didn't even mean to do that that's actually art project and now you're rever now you're reversing it project is literally yeah the llc title um that's funny because <laughs> it's literally an art project yeah, yeah. but no so like uh, it's merch to me by foley's merch, merch. Not yeah. design, not like cover art, anything. Well, like it is. Yeah. That's but that's me. You know what yeah. I mean? But like the the commerce version of by Foley is merchandise. Yeah. Like it's a printed ashtray, it's a printed T shirt. None of that was cut and sew. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I spent time researching like a good hoodie and made spent extra money making sure that it was a good quality hoodie and like went the extra yard. You know what I mean? Like I'm still yeah. trying to do it right with the packaging, with the branding, with the lot like with the labels. It was like sewn in woven labels like i was trying to go above and beyond spe spending the extra money out of my pocket to make sure that it was a quality product even though it was just merchandise to me and mm -hmm. still is mm -hmm. that it will continue like i'll probably still like you remember the playboy yeah. shirt yeah so that was literally like a comment on society like that was my way of being like yo what the fuck is going on for real yeah like there's naked pictures on the internet of her first lady and everyone's acting like it's okay. And like, I just kind of flipped, like if you look at the titles on it, like I just flipped a mirror on it. I didn't say anything that wasn't already being said by everyone. You know what I mean? I wasn't yeah. voicing my own opinion. I was just like, yo, do you guys see what the fuck is going on right now? And it, it went ham. It went ham, bro. Like that was a great shirt. That was a great release. A lot of people hated me for it. I got a lot of unfollows, but I mean, that's like completely okay. If you don't rock with me for, for You're going to create what you actually want to create. You don't care what people. Right. So like, I'll, I'll probably do more shit like that. Like I'll do graphic releases and like, there, there will be graphics with art, but like, it's not a graphic centric mm. product. You know, it's, it's about the craft. It's about the process of getting it there. It's about making sure that that hoodie will last you for five years, 10 years that it's going to. You know, the seams aren't going to fall apart. It's not, you know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to make the best hoodie I can from my own perspective. Mind you, I'm trying to be cautious with costs because I still want to be able to make it affordable. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I'm trying to make sure that people can buy this. And I learned my lesson with the previous brand that was overpriced off of hype compared to what the time and value of the actual product is. You know what I mean? Like everything that I'm doing now, like bro, I'm doing a table. Uh, we saw that, right? Right? Yeah. Is that the image? Yeah. So the table, I'm trying to figure out how I can do it. I'm probably, so I'm probably not gonna be able to sell the table because the top of the table alone, just the fucking piece of wood that's the top of the table mm. is costing me $500 <laughs> before before manufacturing, app, manufacturing selling, upcharging to the make other some type pieces of profit. Yeah, yeah shipping you know how heavy that shit's gonna be to fucking ship bro <laughs> i'm not gonna be able to get that to anyone that buys it yeah so like i'm it's literally gonna be like one of those things where like it's, you're gonna have to like commission it yeah it's gonna be like an, a commission is it a certain piece. piece of wood yeah you don't don't say it. i don't yeah, want you yeah, to yeah. but there's like a there's, whole yeah there's i gotta a reveal behind. like yeah. yeah yeah okay i found this crazy wood that like bro it's like there's like reports where it like it's poisonous, but also cures cancer. Like it's insane. It's insane. So I saw that and I was like, yo, I have to use this wood. So like, I'm trying to, <laughs> I'm still trying to find. I'm Foley's still... going up, knocking down redwoods up in California on, on his weekends. Bro, we found it cause our tour bus literally on the last day of tour headed to the final show breaks down in the middle of nowhere, like middle of nowhere coming, coming from San Fran or no like Chico to San Fran mm. middle like 
middle of like farm area mm. bro so we break down we end up like getting finding this like farm owner that like works on trucks and shit and like yeah. has a welder and is literally like able to, under our truck trying to like <laughs> weld the fucking back <laughs> and we're just chilling and the guy it's the farm is on a wood farm yeah like they just grow trees for like special kinds and it was the owner's wife had him growing this special tree for her own project because she loved the way the wood looked and she actually had like a finished like she's like a small piece of it like this big just like and it had just like a, a gloss finish like no dying no mm-hmm. nothing it was the most beautiful piece of wood i've ever seen i was like yeah what the fuck is this wood so i like i'm literally like having the dude ask the owner to ask his wife what the wood is mm-hmm and we're like there for hours and so i actually get the answer while we're still <laughs> you have there time, you have time right, to kill, right? so they do it and i google it and it's like expensive and no but it also well it just like starts telling me about all these stories about how it has these healing pro- it's poisonous like the bark or something part of it's poisonous but it's also been proven to like help treat cancer wow so i was like this shit's awesome. Yeah. It's like the best of two worlds. Yeah. Like, A, it's beautiful. Yeah. But B, it's got like this awesome story. There's like a story behind it. It's not yeah. just like some wood that is found outside and doesn't have any benefit right. to exactly. it. Exactly. And found it in like the craziest way. Yeah. So I was like, I'm like. I feel like this whole art, this whole art concept and, and vision is, is so much of everything leading up to where you are in your life. Where when it's from designing, whether it was putting out your own clothes, whether it's. Uh, as we'll talk about like shoe design like i feel like this timing is where it it needs to happen that's what it feels like yeah if like we said bro i had the idea for this shit four years ago like and i even i actually had the full draft of like a business plan with like full like prepared to launch it in 2017 Hmm. so like there was two years between idea and then like actually like all right i'm gonna do this and then it's taken me the last two years to get to here but it's been it's literally been every experience that i've had in my life has led to this like there's a reason that like bro this is the this is what the hoodie's gonna be made out of yeah this is how good is that this is the hoodie yeah wow how good is that yeah look put it on your arm like yeah like as if i was wearing it yeah yeah this will put me to sleep right now yeah yeah it's cozy as fuck (laughs) so that's not what this one's made out of yeah. But it's what it will be made out of. Like, so I just went to New York. I met with all these fucking people. And, like... Just to find, like, a, this certain type of material. But it's, like, yeah. And I went to, like, the top people. Like, they're sourcing it from, like, the biggest place. Like, it's the best. And once you find this material, are you able to get as many different colors as you want, essentially? Or are you... Is well, it... so, basically, you get what they call PFD. It's, like... It stands for prepared... Prepared for dye. Uh-huh. It's basically this color. It's, like, an oh, off-white. Okay. And you just dye. And you whatever. dye whatever color you yeah, actually yeah, yeah. want. So like when you get a garment, it's not actually white. Like if you if you're gonna dye something, it's not white. It's like this off color. And you I got you. Make it white or make it black. So you can it make red. it any colors you want, as long as you know the material that you want. Yeah, you could print fucking an image on it if you wanted. Wow. You know what I mean, like you could sublimate like your whole any, wall. Anything you, know what I mean? anything you want yeah. on it. Wow. Yeah. So like that's been a process, just finding the right material, like finding the right manufacturers getting this shit made you know there's a lot of like i'm so i'm wearing the first sample of it this is the first this so it went from actually i posted it on my instagram the other day it has more what first. gave you the green light to finally announce it what what was the when because this literally did, when was this a couple days ago what when did you when did you announce this or uh the company yeah couple days ago i've been been teasing it for like a really long time on my instagram story yeah like i I actually have like one of those like memory things set up so like that's the from top to bottom the middle two are the finals but Mm -hmm. from top the first left to right and then the bottom two were the versions of how i got to the hoodie sketch wise and that's over years i was just like yo this is like what my ideal hoodie would be Mm. because bro i've worn a hoodie i don't know every day (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> for like the last you know 23 years yeah no but like seriously bro you look at like my baby pictures i'm always in a hoodie like and i would like i would have these hoodies that i would love and i would wear like i still do to this day like mm. i'll just find a hoodie and I'm like that's you the, rock it that's my you, still, you still rock it yeah i still have one of the og fresh leads i'll show you after Amazing. a blue one it was like uh 
Yeah, I, I'll show you later. It's, it's from literally like 2012, 2013. That's amazing. And it's one of those hoodies that I just I'll never get rid of. It just it feels right. You know what I mean? This, um, this sounds super douchey, but I probably have. I don't know. I'd say a hundred, maybe more black hoodies in my closet. <laughs> like it's a, but it's, like different designs. Yeah, and different, oh yeah, yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. And it's all like you know, there's probably half of them are shit that I've designed. Yeah. The other half. But still, a hundred. 100 black bro so i have like you know i mean definitely the length of this this, this wall. wall and it's literally black hoodies the <laughs> whole way and then i have like because my whole closet is literally just hoodies yeah and then shoes i have like have you have you brought down the shoe collection or not are you still yeah yeah but no no nah. <laughs> you're not so you're not living the minimalist I, life like i consolidate i i consolidated to like you know so i can fit I, it was, I got I got over like grown with shoes. Like I had to give away. Like I gave away and I threw out. So I, I probably threw out. Not threw out, but like I was like, all right, there's sixty shoes right here that I'm. You got to get rid of. Never gonna wear. Wow. Some of them were brand new. Like been been sent by brands or some I'd beat to shit. Some I had worn once and just been like, nope, that shit's uncomfortable or too mm. small. You know what I mean? Some shoes just fit differently. I'm like, I got kind of wide feet. And I'm like pretty specific of like how jeans like lay on the shoe. Yeah, like, yeah. Oh, I mean I'm in fashion, so like there'll yeah. be certain reasons why I just don't fuck with a pair of shoes, even yeah. though I spent stupid. However, <laughs> you know, hundred, you know, <laughs> shoes don't retail for that crazy. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, I, I try not to buy. I try not to buy shoes at, re, uh, at aftermarket. Yeah, because like, they just jack it up. They just jack it up. It's stupid. I can't. I gotta send you a doc called Minimalism on Netflix, and it might I already, change it. I already watched it. Had the filmmaker on the pod before. That's amazing. He yeah, crushed it. If you've seen it, then you get you it. You know, you see what Rhetoric's doing. No, uh, the With living in the van, amazing. Bro, that's awesome. Could, could you do it? Hell yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Like, <laughs> it's I, like I could do would it. Would I? Now. Would I be successful if I did that? That's a different question. Yeah. I need, I need structure. To, I need to be here. I need, I need a bed. I need to like. I need to be here. I need yeah. to be in New York. I yeah. To, you know, I mean, I need to be in. I can't be like. But I respect people that oh, can do it. that. I wish I. I part of me like is genuinely jealous, which yeah. is that like. In another life, I would be doing genuinely. In another life, that's what I would be doing. You know, I bet you that there could be a point where maybe you do a three month or six month like I'm just gonna go yeah off the grid and. Try to get creatively. I don't know. It's just so hard well, to just like, dis yeah, disconnect. You know what I mean? Just to completely disconnect like that and live in, in a van and drive around and. So I don't have a license. Never have, right? Well, I got my I got my permit when I was still living in Mass, and then I moved away before I could get, it. and I was living in New York. Wow. You know, so I had my I drove whenever I had someone over twenty one in the car until mm. I was eighteen. Mm -hmm. and, a few times afterwards, but um, <laughs> nobody knows. Nobody knows. Right. Don't tell anybody. Yeah, don't tell anybody. Yeah. Um. But yeah, so I don't, I don't know. So I have the dream car. Mm. It's a very attainable dream car. Mm. Like I could get it like very soon. Mm. Like if what not, car? I already have had it. What car? It's a Mercedes five sixty SL. Oh yeah, nice stretch. A lot of room. A lot of lot of room on it. Oh, I didn't even realize that's tatted on you. Yeah. Why? Why? What's the significance of it? So my dad had it when I was a kid. Um, and I have these just like the most fond memories of my childhood are in that car and like driving that place is like, I just like, I loved it. It's a beautiful car. The interior, like it's the out, like the whole thing, man. It's so fucking sexy. Mm. So um, my dad was actually going to give it to it was beat to shit. Like it sat in our garage for years. Like it had, it had to have some work done on it. But I, you know, I, when I turned 16 and had a license, it was going to be mine. I ended up moving away and my parents didn't know it. Like what if I was ever going to need it or whatever. Mm -hmm. And like, without saying anything, donated it to a charity. Donated it. Bro. It broke well, your like, heart. Yeah. Yeah. Well, to like, it was like, it was a charity for autistic kids to work on cars. Wow. So like respect, you know, that's huge. Like I, I'm okay with that. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. Like someone, someone's going to be happy. Yeah. You know what I mean, it would have cost a lot of money and it, like, I probably would have fucked it up. You know what I mean? First car, <laughs> like I now have this love for it that I didn't 
I did always love it. You know what I mean? That's why I was yeah. heartbroken when it was given away. But, like, now that I lost it. Mm. You want it back. Yeah. You want it back. Bro, I want that car so bad. Even if I can't drive, bro. Yeah, I just, just wanna, to have just it in the driveway it. just to see bro. those, like, that's mine. Yeah. I, like, I love that car. Obviously, I have it tattooed on my body. Like, That's so fire. Bro, I love it. I love that car. Like, it's the... I base designs off of aspects of that car. Wow. Like, it's a sexy fucking car. I'll show you some, I'll show you some pictures. Like, you still have the, the, you still have pictures of the original one? Um, I have, like, one. Oh, okay. I have one of me in it. It's oh, hilarious. that's fire. Yeah, yeah. That's fire. It's not great. Yeah. It's not great. <laughs> but still, it's still but the moment still, it's captured. Yeah, yeah. But, like, yeah, man, I want that car. And I want to... Bro, n- nostalgia. Yeah. I thrive off of nostalgia. Like, yeah. I, like... I think that's what like my driving force for this brand and this company is, is like I'm putting everything that I've done over the last eight years and more realistic 23. Cause I'm literally, I'm there's, I, we can like dive into it, but like there's so many design aspects of this shit that like directly tie into like personal stories and like, you know, the first time I saw my dad's varsity jacket from college, cause he was a college hooper. Mm-hmm. And, like, he got a box of shit from his mom. And just, like, the smile that was on his face. And I, I'd never seen a var- I was young, young, young. Like, I'd never... I, don't know what a, I didn't know what a fucking varsity jacket. He was like, this is what you get when, like... You go to college. You, you go to college. You're a badass and, and, and you're an athlete. You make the team, yeah. yeah. Yeah, So I was like, fuck. So that moment on, I wanted one. So, like, that's why the, the, the shoe's a varsity jacket. Like, like, that's... This is my varsity jacket, bro. Fucking... Oh, wow. Look at this segue. Yeah. Where, don't you have the material? Do you have the material yeah. too? That's the felt. The wool. Oh, now now this is making sense because I had yes. seen your post on Instagram. So, so I'll, I'll explain more. Obviously, like that's part of like I'm, you know, I'll, I'll explain more on Instagram. Like I, I really wanted to tell a story with this. I wanted to be personal. Like basketball was like such was one of those memories. Like my dad loved basketball. He had a basketball hoop in the backyard. Like my earliest memories. Or him and his homies just like out there having fun, shooting hoops. They had fucking UMass um, season tickets when Calipari was the coach. Amazing. So like, I was born like I was literally one and zero at like at the fucking UMass games. Like I was born on like bro, my you parents named me Benjamin. My mom jokes that she wanted me to be a basketball player, so my nickname could be Ben Jammin. Ben yes. Jammin. Yes, it's like bro, basketball has been like a part of my childhood. Like. I wasn't very great. Like I wasn't very good, but I was tall. So I yeah. made all the teams. Yeah, they need way, you. They need you. Bro, they just like lob it over people's heads. And they're like, I throw it up and I might not get it in the first time, but I got the rebound. And I'm like, I probably got it in the second time. How, so like, how did this opportunity come about? Bro. Crazy, crazy. Like so many years to Relation- make this happen. Relationships, your design experience, everything. Dude. Okay. So I, I actually was thinking about this before I came today because I wanted to like get it right because yeah. it's a crazy timeline. 2013, I moved to New York. Mm-hmm. 15 at the time. Yeah. Making all these connections, get super linked up, start start this company with my buddy doing like media and shit and like trying to work with brands doing media mm-hmm. right at the beginning of social media like that era like trying to get in on that mm-hmm. sp days um do you know after do, it was creative and connected was the mm. company name okay it was real real subtle like we were just we just needed something to use so we could have emails and we're emailing these brands back up our one of our homies girlfriends worked at this media marketing company like huge, huge. And they have this database that they pay like $30,000 a year to be a part of. And it has every email to every major person at every major company. So she gave it to us to like email people and try and get, cause she's a G mm-hmm. and uh, try and get jobs. Cause you're we like reaching out to people. Sending Hail Marys. Just sending Hail Marys. And like we were, you know, me and my buddy, like he was doing, he was sending out like media stuff. And like, I was I was in like the, I'm going to hit people up from the, I work with an artist because I'm doing all the mic shit now. Like mm-hmm. we're touring. I'm trying to get clothes. I'm trying to get sponsors. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's the space that I was in. Dude, the first person, the first company that I search is Nike. 
Now, mind you, there's like 24 emails. Like, there's a lot of emails. I emailed every single person. Okay. Every single person. Now, two days later, I get an email back from someone that I didn't email saying, hi, this is, I'm not going to mention her name because, yeah, you know, that's fine. But, hi, this is X. I was sent your email by numerous people and I just wanted to reach out. Please send me your address and your sizes and like, let's stay in touch. Bro, started getting Nike packages to the crib. From an email? From email? No, 24 emails. And but what, was, what were you saying in the emails? Hi, this is what I do. This is who I've worked with. Oh, okay. Just letting them know of you. Not even like asking for anything or, or... Well, like we're going on tour. I'm like reaching out to people that, you know, might be interested in seeding products, which mm-hmm. is, you know, a huge part of that. And at that time, you know, it was the beginning of social media. Like, yeah. You know, brands are pretty open to this shit. I got in. It was luck, bro. Like, I got, dude, I'm 15. Yeah. I'm in my first apartment in New York. I'm just fucking splitting it with like, it was two of us and we built a wall. We had three, whatever. So (laughs) we're in New York, like thugging it. Like, this is the time where like, I'm eating once a day, like trying like going to like this one spot because they would give me free food. Like there was this nugget spot in in the city they would like i would just show much so much love to and had spent so much money on because i loved it yeah they just started hooking it up so i like i was just going every day oh, dude, i was going like almost every day oh and just like getting free shit because i broke you gotta eat you gotta eat so like what i was spending was like the travel to get there mm-hmm. and like that would be you know what i mean just a train pass or whatever whatever you know whatever it was so they started sending you nike shoes yeah i started getting nike packs to the crib and then it happened for a while and then it stopped and I later learned that the person got cancer. She, she's okay now. But, mm-hmm. like, that's why the communicate. like, we haven't been in communication since. But that's, she, she stopped working for, you know, for a while. She's wow. still at Nike. But, um, yeah, like, I was very thankful. And, like, but it was also very humbling to stop. But and I'm not get, so she left. She wasn't answering emails. So, like, I reached out. You know what I mean? I reached yeah. out a handful of times over, like, a year. You know what I mean? Not like just in a week. Hey, just wanted to check back in on this. Like I was spacing shit out. I was like bringing up other projects that I like would love Nike to be involved with. And like, yeah, yeah. you know, just pitching shit. I wasn't hearing shit. And like, I was still, I've still had the fire to like keep firing off emails. But at a certain point, I was just like, this is done. You know, I'm not that guy. You know what I mean? And like, I didn't overdo it. At least I don't think so. I'll probably talk to her at some point and I'll ask her and I'm sure she doesn't even remember. Wow. But to me, I didn't. I felt like I didn't want to be that guy. I didn't want to be a pain. But I still believed in myself, and I believed in dude. It's Nike. Yeah, I know. I love Nike. Yeah, I know. Like Especially it's, it's, having the basketball background, ha- loving fashion. This is bro. It's the you know the brand. Dude, it's weird. Like I remember, like one of my earliest memories. I remember when Michael Jordan retired. Damn, like my that's dad. Crazy, you still remember that? Dude, like I remember. Dude, what's the candy stop candy store in in is it Sweeties? It's in, not that. In NoHo? It's, uh, yeah. On the corner, oh, sweet. yeah, yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bro, literally, it's like a Sunday morning or whatever it is. Me and my dad went to this fucking, you know, Jake's? Yeah. Went to Jake's. Yeah. And we were stopping by Sweeties on our way home. And, like, on the way, walked by one of those newspaper things and it had the Jordan announcement. Like, it was the second time he had yeah, retired. Yeah. And then my dad told me about the first time he retired. And I just remember that. And there's, I don't know why, but that, that dude, like, I was so young. Like, if you look at what year that was, like, that's, I'm like three or four. My God. Like, bro, crazy. Like, I don't know. I, I don't have that many memories from, like, that age. But what I, the majority that I do are basketball related. It's crazy. It's crazy. So, fast forward to, actually, bro, I think I wrote down the timeline. Wrote down, you got the actual timeline written down? Oh, for this, go. For this moment. Let's go. So, 24, so 2014 is when I started getting the packages to the crib. Okay. That was from the email shit. 2015, like, that's when I started fucking with the designs. Like, mm. I, was like, I was like, okay, I have a good enough relationship. Mm-hmm. 
let me design some shit. Like, what would my what would my shoe be? Mm-hmm. And literally, first fucking idea is that. Is this? It's obviously evolved. Yeah, yeah. Changed slightly, but like still the varsity like jacket type aspect of it, dude. I found this picture in my camera roll. And I saved it for this moment. September fifteenth, twenty fifteen. Wow. Leather, wool, Jordan 1. Wow, that is crazy. Yeah, bro. So next day, I start fucking hollering at people. Like, I'm in, because I, I, I'm pretty connected, like, at this point. I'm trying to get this shit made, bro. Yeah. I don't care if it's a one-on-one. I don't care if it's a sample. I don't care if it's a custom. I'm trying to show these motherfuckers that I can make a shoot. That's yeah. what it was about. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, yo. I can do this. And it still is. Yeah. Still is, bro. Like, so I start pitching it to to different manufacturers. And, like, I wasn't getting shit from actual Nike. And everyone that, like, said that they could do it was, like, a customizer that was trying to charge me, like, two grand. <laughs> I was just like, you know what? Like, I believe in this design, enough to do that but i just can't afford that right now it was yeah. like okay i'll come back when i can't afford that yeah because yeah, i yeah. had believed that i would be able to yeah i actually came back to that guy you know maybe a year or two ago right when i 2017 right when i first came up with the idea to do art like as like a business mm-hmm. plan mm-hmm. i reached out to that guy and the price price was like 5k and i was like wow like you know, you know what it's just isn't the dude. This is not happening. Like, so I started the other avenues. I started to talk to my friends. Like, it's like I've got a very successful business in the shoe business. I have friends that own shoe fact factories. I have friends that own shoe brands. I have friends that have collaborations with Nike. Original silhouette. Like, straight scratch. Not like, not like a silhouette a colorway on. on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I mean, I've got people that were like, like the head of shit at Nike and Jordan. Like, that no longer are because no one... I'm not going to talk another about path, it. Another um, path. I literally have a matching tattoo with Michael Jordan's son. Like, and that, oh, so that, I have that on the timeline too. 2016. 2016 got matching tattoos with Jordan's son. Randomly? Or you guys just yeah. became boys over with time? One day. One day. One night we went and got tattoos. Wow. Yeah. Through, through my homie through my homie that like i'm very good friends with and who was the heck the very high up at nike and jordan yeah, yeah, yeah um just brought him over one night and just hung out and just it's a it's a y and k tattoo wow michael jordan son has a where'd, y&k where'd you tattoo. get it i have it on my neck on your neck oh you're right oh, i've seen that one yeah, yeah, yeah. wow yeah jordan okay. son's got him on his arm i was gonna say of all the tattoos that's like that's not even that one resembles so much too of you never know, man. You, ne- <laughs> Bro, you never, you know. never know. Yo, yeah, you should have seen the people in there getting that tap that night. It's crazy. Wow. We were in that. We were in Toronto. Oh, because that was part of the pop up shot experience, no, right? No, or no, we were there for all. Mike had a show, but it was All Star Weekend. 20, oh, okay. Because you guys did do tattoos uh, pop right in the pop ups originally. Yeah. What we talked about on yeah, yeah because yeah. because this tattoo got so famous. Oh, I got. It's you. actually Marcus Stroman's handwriting. Is it? He rewrote it, and then we all got it tatted. Oh, that's yeah. fire. Yeah. Damn, that started a whole wave of people getting the tattoos. Yeah, bro. Wow. So then fast forward, how how does how do is this pot like what what in the last year or two? Like cuz clearly you can design, you kind of you can draft up the concept, but what is enabling this to actually become a real life real thing? So I tried everything I could to make it happen. Literally. Mm. You know what I mean? Like, I have not given up on this project. That's how it happened. Mm. Like, I exhausted every avenue to get to it actually happening. Like, I took so many meetings. I had so many, like, un- unofficial meetings where it was just, like, going over and smoking a blunt and just talking. Mm. Just talk, yo, how? How can I do this? How can I do this the right way? Like, how can I get Nike to be okay with this? How can I 
it just the whole thing. How how can I do this? And I talked to a handful of people that like two people really that like just were like, yo, this is here's how we can do it. I can't really reveal exactly how yeah, it's gonna yeah. release. Yeah. But it's gonna release. It's coming out in August. Mm. Um, literally next month. Yeah. Yeah. Well that's if as long as everything goes to everything plan. goes to plan and it should like I've gotten a lot of reassurances that that's what it's going to be I so I don't want to give an exact date in August because yeah, yeah. like if it doesn't happen you don't want to be like oh I said in the podcast that I right it might be out. a week later or what you know whatever yeah, it is yeah. but August is it should be yeah I, I'm I was supposed to have one by today I was yeah that would have been epic if we had it right here on the table yeah the art logo and and the shoe that I should been. have it by the time this comes out damn um but I'm, yeah, so I mean, it should be on my Instagram by then. Fire. All going to plan. All going to plan. All going to plan. That's why I got the wood table. I got to knock on wood. But, bro, this process has been a four year process. I'm yeah. not, I know it's going to happen now. Yeah. I'm straight. I'm smiling, bro. I'm like, I got that call where they're like, yo, we want to do this. Like, here's like, here's your opportunity. Come to the fucking facility. Like, come, like, this is, here's, here's literally how you get to release your Jordan 1 that you've had in your head and in your back pocket for four years dude i almost cried like even like however minimal the conversation it was so it was a fucking dude there was no details it was the fastest conversation ever yeah i was relieved like i was like fuck yes yeah. like finally like it's literally like it brought every time i see something come out that's even remotely similar it might not have laces on it bro I try, i've taken the fucking laces off the jordan Four years ago, like there's been so many releases in between now and then where they've had laceless technology on whether it be a Air Force One or a Dunk, but it's the same shit that I was trying to do in 2014 when yeah. no one else had done it. Yeah. Like every time I would see like this shoe was supposed to have a chenille swoosh on the side because like a varsity jacket like letter. Yeah. And then like three Jordans came out that had fucking Chanel swooshes and I'm like, the more time that spans, then oh, I'm less. not gonna fucking do that. Everyone's just gonna compare it, and like, yeah. you know. So, there's I've had to make like little tweaks to be like, okay, I'm not ripping, I'm not ripping someone off. Here's how I elevate it. I've like perfected it. I, it's it's not been like, yo, I don't want people to think a certain way. It's from me being like, oh, here's how I can make this better and make it its own art piece because that's really what it is. Yeah. Like, if you look at like how people describe like their art, like. You'll see like oil on canvas. You know what I mean? This is wool leather stitching on rubber. All on, yeah. That's that's how I see this. It's an art piece. Like, if you want to throw it, and if I'm gonna have a pair that sits in a box, mounted in my gallery wall, that's like mm -hmm. amongst a bunch of paintings and shit, because that's what it is to me. It's art. Yeah. Like, I want people to wear it. I want people to wear it around. But like, you know, you might get a couple wears in to look cool, and you might just want to keep it the way it is and just. You know, it's art. It's what, however you want to do it, man. Like, I, I'm really excited. I, I'm working on, I don't want to say too much because it might not be able to happen, but I'm trying, you know, on like a, a varsity jacket, like you get like your, your name on it. Mm -hmm. So if you look on right here on the back side of this, like right where this swoosh is mm -hmm. on this side, hopefully is people Stitch. are going to be able to like, you know how like there's Nike ID. Yeah, can, you can customize it. I'm trying so that you're going to be able to put your name on your shoe. Wow. So it's like your jacket. And wow. It's like, you know, you have that feeling like you pick it up out of the pack and you're like, this is mine. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like that feeling of like, I earned this or I, you know, like. Yeah. You're part of the team. It really like, personalizes it when you, when you're able to put on the actual. Yes. Like the stitching of it. Now, absolute worst case. A few pairs will have that, like the promo pairs for like special people, like Mike, um, everyone that helped me make this happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, you know, other celebrities will help, you know, promote and sell the shoe. Like they, they do promo runs. Yeah, yeah. I mean, but you could even show people like this is what you need to do if you can't if it, if it, you can't get it personalized through Nike ID. This is your best option. Go to this company and get it personalized. Or it's gonna, it's just gonna say art. Oh, okay. In the same, in the same like font. Like, oh, I got you. I got you. You see how it's like the, like that font. Yeah. It's hard to see because it's the black on black. Oh, I see. I can see it though. It's like the classic varsity jacket, like yeah, name yeah. font. Yep. Yep. So the, the, I'm trying 
I'm trying as literally as hard as I possibly can so that people can put their names on it. If not, it will say art on it. This is crazy, man. This is, re- this is really somebody who's bringing a vision to life that you've clearly had for a long time and it's like fine. It, it is coming to life. But it's not even like it. That's the thing. It's not. It, what's interesting is it's not something that it was a lack of of not getting up and doing it. It was just a more of a, a patience game and waiting for the timing to be correct. And all these other things were happening. And you know, it's a self belief shit, bro. Yeah, I knew that it was gonna happen. I knew that it was good enough to happen. Yeah, but just, I, bro, I haven't been able to find like pictures. I've got to do so many phones and laptops. It's on a hard drive somewhere. I'll find the original one before it releases, hopefully. It hasn't changed. Yeah. There's been like... The minor details. The minorest of details. Bro. Yeah. But that's literally my idea from four years ago, and it's still good enough. Yeah. Like, still good enough to get the go-ahead. Like, that's... I'm like, okay, cool. Like, that's just... For the next project, cool. I might not be able to make... Like, bro, this is fucking up my hoodie release. This piece right here, I could have my hoodies drop tomorrow if I wanted to. Yeah, like, I'm. I know how much I believe in this fucking A cord lock, that I'm willing to delay it as long as it needs to happen to get this right. You want to perfect it. You don't want to put something out half fast if it's not if it's not where it needs to be. And not even perfecting it. I just believe in it. Yeah, it's getting it to where it needs. It's just operational. Like I don't even. It doesn't need to be perfect. Like I'm not picky about every tiny detail like i've been there's been so many versions of how it worked mechanically like yeah i didn't want an open back but like fuck it you know what i mean like there's been so many versions i'm just like i believe in what it's going to be that i don't really care what happens in the meantime or what little necessary steps steps that's part of the learning process i get excited about learning how to do this yeah it makes me happy like i wake up and i'm like yo how can i do that like how Bro, so this shit, both of these. So, like, look, these are, like, technical-ass drawings. I've never, ever done anything like this before. Like, literally, for anyone, ever. I learned how to make a drawing like this to make this drawing. <laughs> like, same thing with that. Like I, I would, like, sketch bad shit on my yeah. iPad as rough ideas to send to someone else to have them illustrate. I was like, wait, no, I can do this. Now, that's not great, but, it, dude, I literally sent that to them, and they said, well... We don't have to do anything because normally they have to take it and then and redo this. Yeah. For for it's a it's a manufacturing tech pack. Yeah. They didn't have to recreate mine. Mine was literally exactly what they needed. I've never done one before. I've never seen like I'd only like I like I kind of pieced it together. Like I I've seen like a few things here and there, but like they literally were like, "Yo, we don't have to change do anything." anything. Like, well, that was the one thing we talked about even in the first podcast of like. Even from when the when you got the when you first got a MacBook, it was it was then you teaching yourself through YouTube through all these creative outlets of just like I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm just still doing it. To, yeah, still doing still it. doing it every day, every <laughs> fucking day, dude. I know it That's excites crazy. me. Yo, yeah. it's like this childlike, bro. It's crazy. Like, bro, my girl sees it. Like, I'm very mild mannered. Like, yeah, when I talk about a lot of things, I'm laid back. You see, like, my body language. Like, yeah. my eyes widen. I get excited yeah. to talk about this shit. Like, because this shit's all been in my head. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I just needed, like, there's just been little bits of validation. And I was just like, do it. You know what I mean? And, like, and there's been little parts of, like, is this now the right time? Shouldn't you just be doubling down on, like, what you're doing right now? Like, the Gary Vee shit. Like, you have successful shit. Double down on that. But then there's also, like, the, I know that I'm not happy just doubling down on that stuff. So I spent like the last year or two being like, can I still do everything that I'm supposed to do from a business standpoint and partnership standpoint? And the answer is fucking yes. Yeah. Yes. And this shit just makes me better at that. Cause now yeah. like I'm out here like learning all this shit. I know how to make molds and all this crazy shit that now we can go back and like we're buying companies that now that we now need to do mold shit. Thank God I got a fucking idea of like how to you know work with molds because i just spent fucking 16 hours <laughs> researching it on youtube yeah and trial and error bro like i'm going to arts and craft stores and in my fucking apartment building boxes and like dude like i fucked up my floors bad my, like mm, i'm i think i'm gonna be able to get it off it's mostly paint to be honest with you <laughs> but like it's bad bro i'm just like treating my apartment like a studio which yeah. like it is i don't leave i create there like that's what I, like you know, like that's what we actually just got a new space um we're moving into like a warehouse 
as a part of this acquisition, we're like mm-hmm. buying a new warehouse to move everything into, um, which is gonna like house so me. That, Cause you guys were running, you were running this out of Mike's crib, originally, yeah, right? So yeah. now it's gonna be its own separate space. Yeah, so we were using like a, a spare bedroom and the garage and storage units to run for the last, and we've done millions and millions of dollars. Wow. But now it's just time, like we, we're gonna we're gonna grow. We're taking over this new space. We found an awesome, like historic building. Like it's beautiful. I'm very excited to be a part of it. There's like cool shit in there, like other creatives and like mm-hmm. it's gonna be a good environment. But most importantly, it's gonna be the house of everything. And it's gonna be where like the comp I've been kind of tiptoeing around this, but uh, Chug Bud is the name of the company that we just acquired. Mm. And it's a drinking accessory. Mm. And we're putting we're making we're making them in the house. Like we're we're not making like that sounds bad, but like we are bringing production in house. Like we took over the company, and now we have we have a warehouse and we have employees, and there's there's gonna be an assembly line and wow. like you know what I mean, like the it's whole real shebang. Deal. We're fucking, yep, yeah, and like a whole there's like a custom aspect to it, and like the white labeling, and like there's a whole it's a real serious fucking business. Like so that's a whole that's a whole other shit, you know what I mean? So that's like. There's a lot of moving pieces lot, right bro. now. A lot. So that's kind of been like, we got this all. We're about to like about to push go on it. Like, we might there might be an announcement before I before this even comes out. But this, this will we'll be out in about a week. So I don't know if that'll be. Yeah, it's still timing. tentative. Like, yeah, still got to finalize some shit first. Just like website and branding stuff. Just little tidbits. You know what I mean? Like, this has been a process. Yeah, but. It's been great, bro. So like everything that I learned, you know, when I just like hunker down and like do my exploration, I'm able to apply on this on another level. With with everything being said today, what do you think your definition of success is? Happiness. And that's, you know, different for everyone, bro. You know, if it's like the Gary Vee shit, bro. If you love cars and get some cars, you're gonna be fucking happy and successful. You know what I mean? If you love beaches you know buy a house on the beach you'll be happy like you just or if you know you don't like material things then you know then you don't need material things like it's just it's achieving whatever you want to achieve is success you yeah. know what i mean it's being comfortable and not, i'm not comfortable because it's not easy you shouldn't be comfortable comfortable is complacency but like you should be happy you should be aware of the journey and you know how it makes you feel and all that shit, you know, like I genuinely found like this new joy and just like, I figured out what was going to make me happy, bro. And like what all this learning and all this, like, bro, I'm learning so much cool shit. Yeah. And like, I'm not only am I just like taking on information, i have the wherewithal to like know how to use it and be like, Oh, I could do this like this. I could do this differently. I could merge these two things. Yeah. Bro. I figured out how to put an image on a candle. I wish I brought this imagery. I'm so I'm working on this project. It's gonna be a candle. It's gonna be a cement frame, like picture frame. Mm-hmm. That's it's literally gonna look like a picture frame. And then in the middle is like a flat, flat candle with t- a couple wicks. Mm-hmm. I figure out how to get an image on to the wax. Oh. So that like it's gonna literally look like an image. So I can work with artists like yeah. You know, I can collaborate with, you know, someone I'm friends with, or I could license Basquiat, who's dead, you know, but whose estate licenses out for a fee and, you know, approves shit, but it could literally be a framed, framed candle Basquiat thing. So basically the, it will burn down and then the frame will remain and then you can use it as an ashtray or, you know, a potter or whatever you want to use it for. But like all shit like that. So like the, I needed to learn how to make a mold. Yeah. I needed to learn out how to make a scent. I needed to learn how to get the image onto the fucking to the candle. actual candle of right. Which like was the rabbit hole that I got went down first. I like saw this one thing and I was like, oh my god, how can I do this differently? Yeah. Like because they were doing it poorly. Like it. It was almost like. They're basically like taping can like images onto candles. And like if you burned it, it and wouldn't it, it work. It wouldn't actually it wouldn't work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I saw it and I was like, fuck, why aren't people putting images on candles? And I just did so much fucking research and just went down so many rabbit holes. I'm talking days. Yeah. Days of just being like, Yeah, this would be really cool. Figuring out how to do it. Going back to the drawing board, being like, Okay, what can I do with this technology? 
paintings you mm-hmm. know all this shit and like the whole it ties back into art bro so like i'm just gonna be able to do like so much shit like we talked about like off camera like the artist series yeah like i want to be able to work with different artists and collaborate and provide like a canvas for them so like whether they want to make a version of the hoodie or put their own art in the frame of the candle and come up with their own scent or use the one we have or like whatever they want to do like that's the kind of shit i want to do and like it's happening i'm not it's not much like saying it's like yeah it's actually like in the works it's just fucking it's really hard to do yeah really hard to like find someone that's a fucking cat designer that's gonna understand where my head's at with the the box the frame figuring out what the exact dimensions are for that frame making sure that it's thick enough that the candle burns long enough and doesn't burn unevenly it's like it's actually like very science like how details. many wicks do i need to put where yeah, do i need yeah. to put them it's a fucking process yeah. bro yeah process like it's like a maze almost i guess i didn't really bring much <laughs> it was the last minute throw everything I brought, in one, one bag yeah, yeah, yeah as no, i was I running it. out the I door and like looking at that email with the address yeah, yeah. i just saw it break some shit to display <laughs> yeah like, i always try to give people something if they want to bring it they can they can at least display it no for sure it's been perfect i've been able to like yeah at least articulate yeah, yeah, yeah no absolutely absolutely um what do you at the end of the day what do you think foley's true purpose is i don't know but I'll tell you, I recently got in a headspace that I want to help people. I want to help people like me, like how people help me. And like, I think I've kind of, I'm not disconnected, but I think due to ego purposes, I haven't been as aware as to the people beneath me. Mm. I'm always studying the people above me and like my peers. Like, you know what I mean? But I've, in design especially i haven't like ever really you know wanted to like not mentor but like pick someone up and be like yo like your shit's dope come work on me come work with me on this project and i've started doing that over the last couple years where like i'll see someone just has this niche for like this one specific thing and i'll it will spark an idea and i'll be like yo can we do this like this and I get to work with artists. I get to work with young up and coming people. And like, I love it because they get to learn something like the product that it's going to sound like an asshole, but like whatever they send back to me, I make it better. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Like I elevate whatever they did. Yeah. And as I, as I wouldn't be able to necessarily do what they did, like it's a great collaboration process. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like I'm not just like taking their work and yeah, yeah, yeah. throwing it on shit and like calling it mine. Like we're, we're working together. Like I'm telling them kind of what to do for the most part or giving like general inspo. Yeah. They'll send it back, I'll critique, I might add it on myself, I might tell them what to change, and then when they send it back, like I normally add shit on top of it. Like whether it, you know, and, and I decide they have no idea what's going on. You know what I mean? If I it'll end up on a hoodie, it'll end up on a mophie. Like, yeah. Whatever it is, like I I love that creative collaborative process. So I actually wanted to say this while I was here. If anyone wants to reach out to me that is creative and like wants to work on shit and thinks that they're dope or thinks that they have potential, like reach out to me. I would yeah. love, love to work with people. Like I've honestly, I've been going through, like when I'll post Instagram stories, the Instagram algorithm's crazy. Yeah. yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. So like when I, I, I don't get shown a lot of shit, but like what I do pay attention to is like when I post a story and let's say it's still like, I get a lot of, like, I don't mean to sound like a dick, but I can't see all the people that watch it. So like mm-hmm. when there's still only like a hundred people that have watched it, you can see who, who it is. And mm-hmm. it like, it actually suggests people to the top of your page. And if I don't know them, I'm like, why? Cause like, it all, you know how it automatically suggests like your friends at the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But like if your friends haven't watched it yet, I'm like, why is this person being suggested being su- at the top of this shit? So I'll click on it. And a lot of times, bro, I'm finding like these dope little creative motherfuckers. So I started like, paying attention to like the little avi picture like the profile yeah. picture being like who is this could there be potential like yeah. clicking on it and, yo yo like I, I found some dope shit man yeah. like yo <laughs> i'm finding kids are like creating their own fonts that are like designed like in designs college but like you know don't have a resume but like have a great eye and like will be dope one day yeah but like, did one thing dope and i can take that and i can use that font and i can add to the font and i can like 
manipulate it and take my vision of it and yeah. like I love that shit, bro. Like it sparks my ideas. Like, you know, I'm sure it sparks their ideas. Like they love being able to work on cool projects. Like, you know what I mean? I've a lot of kids that, you know, wouldn't get to work on like for X client or on X brand, yeah. like now have this resume. Yeah, like, yeah. you know, they can go to someone else on their own and be yeah. like, yo, this is the shit I worked on. So like it's a, it's a win-win for both it's people. It's a huge win. And I want, I want more of that, bro. Like, I want, like if, Fucking holler at me. Yeah. Like if you're dope. <laughs> Hit him up on Instagram. Like, if you even think you like could be a little dope. Holler at me, bro. Hit my DM on Instagram. Like, I'm sure if you're creative in 2018, 2019. 2019. Fuck. <laughs> Time's flying, man. I don't know what fucking day it is. No, that's cool though because I think you end up. Uh, it's beneficial for both parties, but I think you start learning more. You start learning more too Hell because yeah. you're paying. You're like reciting back things that you've learned over the years and yeah, seeing bro. it from a different lens, different perspective. Now here's. A kind of conceited way to look at it. If they're following me, then they're probably influenced by me a little bit. Yeah. But with a unique perspective. So now I get to feed off that shit. Because, yeah. like, they're, they kind of, like, designed f- with me in mind. You know yeah. what I mean? So, like, as a fan, they're kind of, like, thinking about, like, how I could think. And it's cool to see, like, it's almost like a self-reflection. Like, fuck, great idea. How yeah. did I not think of that? <laughs> okay, here's how we can do that, but yeah. do it better. Like, yeah. It's a great. I love that shit, bro. Yeah. Like, I, I, I want to do as much as that as I can. Which is like why with this artist series, like you know, I want to work with well-established artists. Obviously, I have a lot of friends that are well-established artists. So like, that's gonna be where I start. Mm-hmm. But once the platform is a platform to put someone on, that's what the fuck I'm gonna do. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like if I see someone that like, okay, so great. Great example. There's this kid, Orthello Gervasio. Um, he's a painter. Kid from New York, very young. Virgil LeBlow. Fucking found him and started putting his art on off white garments. Mm-hmm. And like that became it almost became like a signature look for off white. Was this dude just paintings? He was just taking his paintings. Virgil was adding like maybe a text or whatever to it but it was obviously his, his garments so like it was more than just taking his art and stealing it like he was actually hiring them and commissioning him and doing custom shit but like that dude has a legitimate art career now like just from that one moment yeah. that one transaction yep i mean i'm sure he was obviously on doing something right to get to the point yeah. where he had to put in the work to get him to that position 100 percent. i don't want to take anything yeah. away from him yeah because he did something to get there yeah but to be able to do that for someone and like, bro, I'm one of my good friends, Jew, working on projects. Uh, we talk about this all the time. And like, he, like he tells, it's more something that he brings up to me because I, bro, I believe in him so much. I think he's so talented. And I think that he's like really one of the greatest creative minds of like our generation. Not even in just like a douchey way, just like the way his brain works is just so fascinating and like relieving. That yeah. is out there and like still so pure, bro. He's an artist, like artist, artist. Like it's amazing. Like it's amazing. He's amazing. He, yeah, I don't know if I should be saying this, but like there's he go like everyone. He goes through self doubt. You know that thing that we'll talk about and like, bro. I have I'm his biggest cheerleader. Like and all my friends, bro. Yeah. Any of my friends are struggling. Like, bro. I'm there to like I'm fucking in their ear. Like, yo. Everyone goes through hard shit, but bro. You got this shit. Dude, think about who the fuck you are, what you've done, and why the fuck you're dealing with these problems. Like, you're fucking, you're going to be fine. Like, yeah. So I, I do that for a lot of my friends. And, like, I think it's very important to do that. Because um, I know I need it, bro. Like, I need I need someone like that in my corner when I get in those moods. We all yeah. do. Like, it's crazy, bro. This is a crazy fucking world. You know what I mean? There's a lot of pressure on those kinds of people. Especially, like, People that have success in doing that shit. Like people that create shit out of thin air and that are successful at it. It's like, okay, can I do it again? And like, you know, obviously there's that Bar little keys again set higher right. and higher. Right. So like think about Lil Nas X. You don't think in the back of his brain he's like, What the fuck am I gonna do? I just had the biggest shit. You know what I mean? He's obviously doing he's riding shit. the wave, riding the wave, and then it, but a year, year and a half, he's gonna wake up and go, well, now what do I do? Well, right. And like there's just, you know, but that's okay. Please, you look at people that hit that moment and what they do is they assess and they change 
they reinvent themselves, bro. Look at Elon Musk. Yeah. Look at how many times he's just been like, yep, did that. Now I'm going to do something <laughs> fucking else. You know, yeah. It's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I know. Crazy. Same thing with the Twitter guys. Yeah. You know how much shit the fucking Twitter dude, uh, that dude Jack has Jack. done? Crazy. Yeah. Squarespace, Cash App, or is it Square? Does he do Square? Uh, I think and Square. I think Square. Square, square Cash, Cash App. App. Yeah. Fucking Twitter. There's yeah. a bunch of other shit, bro. He had a little interest in uh, PayPal. I think I could be wrong. I could be completely wrong. No, Elon. That was right? Elon. That was Elon. Okay. Elon was PayPal. Yeah, yeah, you're right. You're right. Um, but dude, Elon with Tesla, SpaceX, PayPal. There's a, there's a list that's longer than that, but like yeah. those are the main ones, like. And there's been ones that have failed. There's been ones where they've told him, hell no, hell no, hell no. And, like, he fucked up a bunch until he got it right. Yeah. You know what I mean? Until he put the car in space. Yeah. Everyone told me he couldn't that, do that it. That 2,000 tries, the, the light bulb. Bro, that's where I'm at. I, yeah. I believe it. And I can see it literally, for like, right in front of my eyes today. It's unbelievable. I just want to, like, I kind of want to share that with people. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if I can, like, instill that. A little bit of self confidence. Yeah. That goes, bro, that goes a long way. I'm telling you how many times I wish I've been fucking down in my dumps. And I wish someone was just like out of nowhere, just was showed a little love. Yeah. Can not change, not like love, but like, yo, dude, that's that's sick. Every little like every little positive thing that I see on the internet, it's great. You yeah. know what I mean? Everything that you tell me in person, like once dude, when someone's like, yo, that's not bro, to this day, you know how many fucking time, like how many things I've released? How many times people have been like, yo, I like that. Every single time it makes me happy. It's like, yo, I did my job right. Like, yeah. like, thank you. Not even like I did my job right, but like, thank you for understanding. Yeah. It's, it's art. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I mean, dude, honestly, I appreciate you texting me after I dropped that video. You just said, yo, I've seen the uh, the avoiding burnout, been there. Same shit. Respect. Same and shit. I respected that, that like you went out of your way to do that because you didn't have to do that. That was like kind of. I used to have like the little like voice in the back of my head that would say to do that and I would ignore it. Yeah. And like now I don't. Like whenever I see, like that's the same shit, bro. Like I show support to motherfuckers. Like Yeah. Not like overly. I don't dick ride nobody. Like I just make sure that people that should be appreciated know that they are and for the right reason. You yeah. know what I mean? Like bro, that's you don't have to put out that content. Yeah. Like you know what I mean? Like when people post like People post shit about like being down and like going through depression and shit on Instagram. You ever see those posts? Yeah. Where it's like it's really long. Yeah, yeah. And like in the back of your mind, you're you're kind of like maybe it's for attention, like it's a little extra to post. But but really, if they're going through that, which I have, and they have the courage to be open about it and to put that out there, that means they probably fucking got through it in like. You know, or act genuinely in a better place and want to share that. I want to like want someone else to know that it's going to be okay or they can do it too. That's kind of how I feel creatively and like just you know with everybody. Like I, that's that's where I'm at in my career. Like I, I don't want to say I've done everything, but like seen a lot of shit, gone through a lot of shit. Like I know that like it can be good and it can be really bad. Like, yeah, it can be great. There can be the best of times and it can be the worst of times, bro. Like, yeah, for real. Like, I know. I mean, I've like I said, man, I've seen it from afar for a, for for a long time. I, I clearly don't know a lot of like the my, the the details into where how you've gotten to where you are today. But you know, we touched on a lot of specific things in the first podcast, and we touched on a lot today. But like, I mean, I, I definitely respect it. I respect you, what man. you've done for yourself. I mean, I. I agree luck and timing and all that plays a part, but you still had to step up to the plate and, and swing and, you know, being at 15 and fucking rolling the dice and moving out and going to New York and doing the bus trips to Boston. And like that, that's a lot of respect, man. Like that's a, like you put yourself in a position to get to where you are today. Like you, you damn well deserve to be doing a lot of things. You are the network you've built yourself around. You know, I really love the authenticity and truth of like, yeah, I've been through some shit. I've done some dumb shit, whatever, whatever it might be like that to, to, to be able to just say that takes a lot. But, you know, you're doing it, man. I mean, for 23, it's like it's really impressive with what Thank you've you. created and in such a short eight years. But like at the end of the day, being 23, man, like 
the party's just fucking getting started. You know what I, I mean? I know, bro. It's crazy. That's crazy. You know, like, it is wild to think about I'm only 23. I feel so much older. I feel like... You wised up a lot quicker because of 15, bro. You're getting thrown into the world. Yeah. It's been good. It's I do have to check myself sometimes. I forget, literally, how young I am. Yeah. Like, sometimes I think about, like, shit, when am I gonna, when am I going to be able to afford to buy a house? Yeah. Bro, most people don't think about that shit for, like, seven years. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you're 30 when you start thinking about that yeah, shit, yeah. bro. I'm 23. I'm like, fuck. <laughs> it's like, a good thing shit. to be thinking about, but when you step back, it's like, I there's no reason to stress over it. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Appreciate that. Before we get into the closing questions, this is when I reverse the role. I allow the guests to ask me any one question. It could be about something we talked about today, something you want to directly ask me. Any one question. So do you have murder beef with every Uber driver? Or you just have, like have that so much self <laughs> We're going to go down the Uber belief? route. It's always the Uber route. Or do you have like so much self-belief that Dude. you're just like, I know that I'm better than all. I know that I'm a better customer service provider slash Uber driver than all these motherfuckers um, out here? Yeah. Or is it just like, they're taking my rides, they're taking my money? Bro, like, what's what's the beef? Look at the statistics. Look at my Uber account. Look, I got a, I got a sticker on my car that says I'm top 2% in the world, bro. I don't even I don't even need to say anything. I just let the results speak and I have all these compliments. I got people leaving notes. I got the sticker. I'm the best in the game, bro. That's and it's going to be a sad it'll be a sad day when uh when Bobe leaves the streets, but I'm the best in the game, man. I'm just a people's person. It's so it's just like customer service 101. Like, hi, how are you? Good, how are you? Good. Keep your mouth shut. Drop them off. Have a great day. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Do you think you'll ever like relapse? And just be like at home one night, just like craving attention I, I gotta, or like a human communication. <laughs> just be like, "Fuck, I gotta turn it on. I Let's go." go. <laughs> well, that's why I got. In, that's why I got <laughs> social media. That's why I love being a content producer. Big social media. I always can like chime in with people and yeah, and have conversations. Bro, I and, have amazing conversations with Uber drivers. Yeah, they're like, amazing. Yeah, of bro. course. Like we're stuck in a car together for the next twenty minutes. I mean, there you you get rid of the barrier of like we're just meeting and it's just like people get right into how are you today yeah oh my fucking job blah blah, blah. like people just they just let it fly oh out. yeah yeah i hate that yeah i i'm not i'm a pretty quiet person and like i keep to myself in the car like I, i'll say like i'm super polite so like you know i'll be like how's it going like how's your day going yeah like, yeah do that but normally like, i disengage pretty quick and i either like take a phone call respectfully yeah or yeah. There's music going, they're vibing, you know, whatever. But for some reason, whenever an Uber driver actually tries to start like a genuine conversation with me, they're crazy. Yeah. Like you no, know, but like, good. Like oh, I got, okay. dude, I've like crazy stories and just like you know, now that like I'm so versed in like so many different like fields and shit. Like, dude, so I literally was taking Uber last night, um, making this uh, beer pong table for post mm. um, for his birthday. It's fine. It's not. In a couple of days, so this will <laughs> come already, out after. It already be out. Happy yeah. birthday, post. Um, who will be what? Like 22, 23? I think we're the same age. Oh, yeah. that's crazy. I think, I think he's gonna be twenty three. That's crazy. Um, so I got to smash a guitar for it. Like, I'll set, I'll show you a picture. But like, okay. there's a smash guitar is in like this resin. It, it's ex- super complicated. But I had to go to Guitar Center last night and get a guitar to smash. Mm-hmm. Um. And on the ride to drop it off at the manufacturers, the Uber driver was just like, so what'd you pick up? And I was like, well, I'm actually like, I, I don't really know. I said the brand, but like, I'm not a guitar guy. Like yeah. I'm, just, I'm getting this for an art piece. And he's like, ah, like I was a, you know, I toured for 20 years, like with like an old metal rock guy, like had all these crazy stories, like went down the rabbit hole, went down the rabbit hole. But also was like well versed in um, ma- uh, furniture manufacturing and f- wood finishes. So we had oh, so like a very off. like bro. I, I walked. I literally was like, bro. I genuinely appreciate <laughs> this experience. Like that was great. Like my yeah. like my brain fired. Stimulated. Like, yeah, I yeah. love shit like that. I, yeah. I have a lot. I have a lot of those conversations with different Uber drivers just because like. There's so many eclectic people. This out is there. my life, bro. I just sit there and I talk to people and like I if I were you, like I would miss it. Like if you're like actually gonna hang it up, like I would miss like unless you like have another avenue, just go talk to people like that. Yeah. Which like I guess you do. This is it. Talking to people. But like, bro, you can I mean you can have like one interview a day, you know? Or yeah. 
but you could have like 20 con- great conversations. Some days are 20, 30 like conversations in, in a day. It's it, it, yeah, it's there are definitely pros and cons to to it, but I've been I mean for doing it almost 4 years now or 4 years now. I'm great I've to hang it out. I yeah. Well, when the time's right financially, when I can when I can make that transition, I can start doing a lot more of what I want to do at skill, then it'll be it'll be cool. But just, I'm appreciative and grateful for having that platform to allow me to make this happen, make this project come to life. Have you started thinking about your exit content? Like how am I announcing my leave? I already have the it? script. Amazing. I have the script. Amazing. Yeah. You gotta like hoist something into the rafters. I'll tell you what or like I'll tell you the first line. Dear Uber. All right. It just visual piece it's crazy that's great i already wrote it <laughs> amazing <laughs> speaking into life um closing questions one where can people find you on social media if they don't already follow you uh by foley b-y-f-o-l-e-y mm-hmm. or art a-r-d-t i like that i like that we'll have a linked up make sure you go to by foley's actual instagram and drop a bunch of bearded man emojis so he knows you came from the bearded man podcast uh before i ask the final question thank you for coming in today man this has been man. amazing to just reconnect yeah, yeah. um and thank i I, I don't have to say it but i really i really respect and admire the career you've built for yourself coming from western mass it, it touches home to me just because we had completely different experiences growing up but just knowing you literally grew up across the pond from where i grew up it, it, it's cool because it's if there's any part of the world that I want to get insight from my content or from what my whole message is, it's like you can make this shit happen. And so this podcast means a lot to me because it, it stems so much back to 413 Western Massachusetts. But uh, I really do respect everything you're doing, man. And yeah. I, I can't wait to see what art becomes Thank and you. everything else that you are involved with, with Mike, with the buy Foley stuff everything it's, thank you it's really impressive man likewise it really is uh last question for you what two to three pieces of advice would you give to somebody that still hasn't found that passion you're somebody that clearly is passionate wakes up every day with some direction as to what you want and, and need to do what's the best two to three pieces of advice to finding that passion um i think the cutting out the unnecessary content or curating your own content mm. i think that's really important now, if like, you know, you want to be an Instagram model or you want to be a makeup chick, then we're going to follow very different people. But like, you know, follow those people, follow, follow people that inspire you. Don't follow people that you look at under, you know, a maybe jealous of or envious of like, or just, you know, not inspired by. Like, if, I think if you don't, if there's not like an actual emotion tied to them, if you don't actually like. Go through your list. You know what I mean? On Instagram. Look at each person. See if there's a memory or an emotion or a feeling that's, you know, that's tied to that person. And if not, dump that shit. They'll yeah. probably won't see it or they'll get over it. Or you can say, oops, I didn't mean to. You know, yeah. Instagram genuinely unfollows people all the time. Yeah. Like there's been times I'm like, wait, how the fuck do I not follow you anymore? Like, I know I didn't unfollow you. Yeah. Like, yeah. So it happens. You know what I mean? Like you can say shit man like i was or you can be honest be like yo i was just fucking getting my shit together and they're gonna respect that so that's one like be in charge of the information and the the content that you're seeing it'll make your life a lot happier genuinely yeah um take your body seriously i think it's gonna be my second one just because of this recent next shit like i had a i haven't taken my body seriously and i'm a mess and i'm 23 you know, I'm talking about neck surgery. I've had knee surgery multiple times. Like, you know, motherfuckers are out here dying. You know, you got to take care of your body. Like, for real. Like, I, I've really been careless with my health, and uh, it won't happen anymore. You know, I've said that before, but, like, I'm saying it now, and now I'm going to be fucking held accountable for it. Yeah, so You're about to have all the beer man followers fucking nailing you down Facts. or you slip up. I don't mean, like, I'm going to go to the gym every day. But, like, I'm going to stretch. I'm going to eat healthier. Like, I'm going to be aware that when my back's hurting, I should probably go see a doctor and not let it fucking just get worse for four years. And now fucking, you know, you've got a fucked up disc and there's liquids fucking pinching your nerves, you know? Like, that's not fun, bro. Yeah. It's not fun. So, I think taking care of yourself, 
think so I, I, I think that's that's my message here is taking care of yourself with the mental shit the contact like the content like mm-hmm. curate what's coming into your brain bro if you're just seeing like fucking news and like all this obviously you know, stay informed you know whatever you need to do but like you don't got to follow every news outlet or like have all the every alert on for the cnn app you know what i mean like yeah. change it so it's only like the drastic shit or you know set a time that you're gonna go read every article on cnn because that's you know you enjoy that but like i think you got you gotta clear out um clear out the bullshit just really focus on you know what what you want to do and what you want to see you know yeah. what you want to see in yourself is what you should be looking at you know yeah and then physical you know that's so I, that's the two i think that's and I, obviously we got to go back and end it with the do something in a day to make tomorrow better oh, but i love that i think yeah that's all part of it man just you know you got to be better grow be better take care of yourself you know that's it's all you can't do shit if you can't move bro like, i'm real limited yeah like i'm can't design some shit right now like i'm not supposed to be sitting at a desk like you know how fucking terrible bro like I, for this dude yeah i've been fucking like sitting like that's why i've been practicing my meditation just like because yeah. i want bro my brain goes i want to design i don't want to get this shit out like my brain is constantly creating you know how hard it is to just like not be able to do that because you literally if you do that and you push yourself you might not ever be able to do it again yeah that's like real some some humbling ass shit bro like so i that's where i'm at i want to take take yourself seriously take your body seriously you can only be your best if you treat yourself the best do something today to make tomorrow better there we go man Foley thank you that's great appreciate it brother we'll catch you guys next time see ya